call upon your Holy Holy Spirit to come and fill this place, to fill each one of us. I'm just so grateful, Father, that your, your kingdom is still with us. The birthrights that you promised us, that remind us of our, our mansions in heaven, that only you can provide. <laughs> it's reserved in our name. And I thank you so much, Father, for the promises of the restoration. We ask for to teach us. Help us to love one another. Help us to share, Father, the secrets that you have given to each one of us pieces in a puzzle, Father. So that someday we will be able to do so much more. And that the oppression, Father, the principalities and the darkness in high places, Father, will be lovingly lit <laughs> from top to bottom. And that the people will be able to rejoice once again. Because our Lady loves us. We ask, Father, for your continued love to pour abundantly out of this circle into Waina, out of that, Father, just the flooding earth. Begin with each person here, Father. Change us. Teach us how we can help just the people here, Father. And I thank you that most of the people in this circle have a relative that you have given your birthright to in these islands. But whatever we can do to help all of this be restored, show us, please. And I thank you for bringing your dad and husband and for each person, Father, who chose to come today. For I know there's so much wisdom, Father, that we have yet to share with you. So much encouragement. Please bind, Father, the strong has been stealing from us and pillaging us for over 125 years. We bind them in the name of Jesus. We ask, please, set, teach us how to set the captives free. Teach us how to <laughs> bind the broken party. To share, Father, the hope that you promise, and as we humble ourselves before your presence. You will be the lifter of our hands. So go before us, Father, prepare our mind. Give us courage. Make us strong, very courageous, Father, for the times ahead. And most of all, Father, we would love, even our enemy, that we would practice our love, our love, our love. And your love would never stop flowing from our hearts, and we would never be defeated. We know that without your love, nothing. So anoint this time, Father. Allow your spirit of freedom to bring healing to each one of us inside out. Open our eyes to your dreams and your visions of what you desire for each person here to do for your glory, not for ours. I just thank you so much. But the people here care about what you have done so long ago, but still so important to us. Because these promises of our future are resting. So we call upon you, rest with us. Thank you for demonstrating, Father, only you can rest with us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Please, and if you and if you don't have a microphone, please speak loudly. Hello. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. Do we, do we have another mic? Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah.
play with it for the difficult one. Um, uh, uh, for those who really don't know me, my name is Mahalani Mahanaoy, um, and I am the head of state for Aupuni Oko Hoi Paiaina. I've been recognized since April 16, 2008, at the legislature of the state of Hawaii. Not that that really matters, but it has mattered on occasions when um, we were in court. On occasions when we were arrested on the airline palace, but we have been away, and it was because of that particular, particular letter of recognition. And actually, it was uh, we were recognized by Karen Awana, and it was brought into one of the uh, what you call the sessions. I think it was the 51st day of legislation in the state of Hawaii. It was 16, 2008. So this year, maybe 10 years. They never did repeal it at all, and so that was the first time even to today, that they've ever recognized King, anything kingdom, uh, and they did. They also recognized all of my offices, and I have it around here somewhere. I was looking for some other books, and right now I'm at a loss because when all these things are so attached to me, but sometimes I take my books, go in the house, look at it, but I always keep it in my phone, wherever I go. We always share them. Yeah. We share the news of the white kingdom. Anyway, um, today, I, it was kind of like a... Um, how should I say this? I wasn't really prepared, but I was prepared. <laughs> Meaning because um, I, I just re recently found out that three of us were going to sit on the board. Um, Amelia Vara, who I fought Amy, and um, Kilikina. And um, I'm sad that they're not here because um, they have a lot of talent in the things that they do. One specializes in genealogy and the other one, um, a lot of the constitutional and U.S. laws, you know, and so they both got a lot to bring to the table. But fortunately, you know, we have Leon here. So tonight, I wanted to make it kind of like, a, you know, very Ohana. So meaning that we can interact act and ask questions, you know, and if you have anything that you want to ask me, go right ahead. So I'm going to swing this from the beginning. And what I'm going to um, go off with, for me, I specialize in the kingdom law. And, um, and I've been actually exercising it for many, many years, a lot of years. And um, uh, my small beginnings. 1974, I went to the Yolani Palace and I saw George Hill. I don't know, I'm not sure. I think Leon was there, Walter Reedy, um, Mitchell was at George Mitchell. Him and Terry, what's Terry's name? Yeah, Terry. And they were all over there, and I was wondering, what are they talking about? What do you, what do you mean? We're not U.S. citizens. It's all I knew my whole life. I graduated from uh, Roosevelt High School in 1973, and they never taught anything about the Queen or about the Queen. So I started to do a lot of self-discovery on my own, and I've pretty much been through um, almost all of the different groups, sitting in their meeting and learning from them. And even if it was new beginnings for them, you know, we all learn from one another. And you know, for me, um, I <coughs> truly recognize all the different group leaders out there, because we're just pieces to the puzzle. And when we come together, it can be something that can be so very powerful. Yo. But I can tell you this, we, we, we may be leaders, but we still need everybody to make this come true. I look for it, because I'm very pro-independent. I'm not into any state, city, federal, and I can tell you the reasons why. But instead of doing that, it's better for me to share some things that's much more positive that we have been delving into for the past couple of years, and it's been going to be very successful. Uh, so, uh, if you guys can, um, I'm going to be opening up certain things that we've already been going through. And if you have questions, can you just hold your questions until we finish maybe that topic, and then you can ask me if you have any questions. Okay, so if you raise your hand, I know that you have a question I want to talk about. If it's something that's outside that has to do with, you know, maybe Leon or someone else, um, I really would not want to um, make any comments um, because there's other leaders that who are doing many things. And um, just to share with you on what I have without commenting, because I may not be in agreement to some of the things, but I will share you with you why I feel the way I do without mentioning any names. If that's okay with you, we can begin. Okay, hi Terry. 
All right. So anyway, um, actually for the last two months, um, and this is something that's currently happening, um, I've been helping um, a family, which is Charlie's Ohana, Kahele down in Haula. And if you go towards Haula, where the beach park is, across the street, right past the 7-Eleven, is a church over there. And it's called the Haula Kahuku Church. But they changed it um, into the Haula Congregational Church. And the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because when I first met them, they, did, they wanted to just have the word preached to them, and they were waiting years for a kahu to come. And nobody came. And, you know, and they missed the church because the great-grandparents used to you know, um, be the kahu of the church, and they had their own board of directors and everything. So we started, I started to take them to the Bureau of Convenience, where you can find all the royal patents and nine commission awards. And if you don't know what that is, I can explain to you later. We went to the archives. We went to the servant map. We went to the DCCA, many different places we went to pull up the information that we needed. And the only reason I'm going to bring this up because it, there was a revelation that came out that totally blew, blew my mind. Okay. And I want to take you to that place. So just, you guys, anybody ever, ever heard of the UCC? The United Church of Christ? Okay. How many of you guys know that they were incorporated in the kingdom in 1873? You do? Are you a Kahu? Or yes. You are? Which I particular don't care church? Kua. I don't care Kua. I don't care Kua. Oh, in, here. in why not? Oh. oh, okay. I thought I saw one coming down on the right. There was a sign. It's a, a yeah, you see the sign. Yeah, I saw a sign going yeah. in uh, before Jack in the Box, I think. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then okay. head on up the hill. Okay, so uh, is that particular yeah. church? Follow the post office from right up there yeah, on the right hand side. Is that particular church under UCC? Yes. yes. Oh, I don't know if I should bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I should, I should, right? It's all good. It's all good. And, you know, I mean well, but you know me, I always, I always pull it, and I ask for the Lord to unveil and give me His wisdom so I can be able to understand and break it down, right? Because I like to decipher things. And so, anyway, what happened is that we see this long history of this particular church, and that church was actually functioning since 1843. And it's like, oh. So I said, okay, this is where we're gonna begin. I said, we're gonna go to the Bureau of Commands, we're going on the second floor, and we're going to the map site where the survey, they call it the map survey area. So you have to go in the Bureau of Commands and go on to the second floor. So we went there, the guys who know who know me and my husband, because we go all the time, I said, bring me every map on Haula. I wanna see it. Now Haula is a crown land. That means that that land Actually, before it was called Crown, it's called King's Land. The, the name Crown Land came in 1865 in this particular case that had to do with Queen Emma because she said this was her land. Okay, so somehow or another, they changed the name to the Crown Land for a specific purpose. And you don't see all these hidden things that happen. So anyway, um, so I said 1843, wow. So anyway, I said, so what's the name of the church now? They said, oh, it's... Uh, to the UCC, I said, UCC? Like UCC, like United Church of Christ? They go, yeah, I go, okay, something's wrong with this picture. And that's all I said, but we're gonna do some hunting. So we pull up the Haula map, and there's LCDs, <coughs> and if you guys don't know what that is, it is a Land Commission Award, and it is an award that you get during the Kingdom time. And the Land Commission Award was the first step you take when you were to make a claim on land, okay? It was legislatively approved and signed by the king, okay? So, I, I'm going to bring to you guys the fact and the law. In 1848, there's this Mahele, right? If you've heard of the great Mahele. What many people think is one-third, one-third, one-third. Uh, all it is not. The Mahele has to do with all the 245 chiefs, Konihiki, Ali'i, whatever you may call them, and the king, Kamehameha III, Kawiki Auli, okay? Nobody else but these two parties. And the whole idea was, because of the influx of all the foreigners that wanted to steal the land, he wanted these lands to be recognized under international law because in our constitution we recognize international law. So what he did was he called all the Korihikis to come forward and to go ahead and surrender all their lands back to him. The purpose was that when they did that, 
that he would walk through the process with them so that they would have their lands in their name forever. Okay? So what they did was they gave it up. When it was validated that they had made the claim, and the Konehikis only claimed Ahukua'as all over and Ili. So Ahukua'a is the greater um, portion. It's like from the top of the mountain, it goes to the shore, two miles, hit the ocean floor. That is an Ahukua'a. A lot of people think it goes to the shoreline and it stops, no it doesn't. It goes up two miles, why? Because there's fishing involved in an Ahukua'a. You know, you got the lo'i, you, you know, you got all of these things, and many of the farmers today, is very aware, it doesn't stop at the shore, it will go out. So most of the Konihikis, pretty much most of the island, um, Ahukua'a was claimed, but not all of them. And that which was not claimed by them, all went to the king, Kamehameha III. Now, when they got the Land Commission Award, it didn't say where the meets and bounds were. So it would be like in the, um, like maybe something like, okay, in the Ili of Awayolimo, um, on the island of Oahu, okay. And I'm saying Awayolimo because that's what they call Papapalea today. And that's where I was born and raised in 1955, yeah. in Papapalea. So I know very well of that particular area. And that's the first area under the Hawaiian homelands that they gave leases, that's the Honolulu area. So it was Awayolimo, Kewalo, and Kalapahine. They all attach. By the hip. So anyway, um, so what happened is that when it was validated, there were five board of commissioners which was all appointed by the king, Kamehameha III. And there was laws that was passed, legislative laws that was accepted and signed by the king himself. So what these five would do is it would validate each Konehiki. <coughs> okay, so once they did that, he said, okay, you don't have the meets and bounds, but this is going to be the Ahukua. And if this is the one you claim, it's going to be under your name. If you want the meets and bounds of it, or if you want the true title in writing, you're going to have to pay what they call commutation. Commutation was a one-third unimproved value of the land. And so because the Konehiki were all warriors and they fought, they didn't have any money with them. So all the lands that they were sacrificing or surrendering to the king what would happen is that whatever lands they desired, because they didn't have money to pay the commutation, and money was strictly gold and silver. You couldn't pay with Federal Reserve notes, paper, uh-uh. It, it had to be backed by gold or silver. So what they were doing is like, if they had some key you know, lands that they wanted, so let's say they gave up 15 parcels, but they wanted these key lands, and they were like thousands of acres. They were able to keep it but you would see them giving up or relinquishing like 10 parcels to keep only five. But when they did that, that meant that the kingdom government had no jurisdiction, they had no say in those lands forever. Now you folks need to understand this, okay? So again, Land Commission Award was an award that was signed by the king, approved by the Land Board of Commissioners, okay? So, uh, <coughs> on, let me take it back. The Land Board of Commissioners would sign it and they would okay it because the king already had nominated these five people. After that, if they wanted a royal patent, they would have to pay the commutation. After they paid the commutation, they would have to look for a certified surveyor to survey for the meets and bounds. Once they did, they would go to the Minister of Interior, and when they go to the Minister of Interior, they have to show them the Land Commission Award, they have to show that they pay the commutation, then they would have to show that they have a certified surveyor, and then you go to see all the meets and bounds. Once it met all that criteria, you would now be able to get a raw patent. That name, that, that name on the raw patent is forever. So when you read a royal patent, it's going to tell you that it is to him, his heirs, and they used to say successors, but it went heirs and assigned. So the heirs is the bloodline of the particular recipient of that particular royal patent, okay? Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. And this is the procedure, it, it has never changed, okay? And so knowing what a land commission award or a royal patent is very, very important to us living in these islands, okay? So anyway, so 1848 is the Mahelic. Two years later, they have the Kuliana Act of 1850. The Kuleana Act of 1850 had only one party that was involved, and that was the Maka'ai Nana. 
So the Maka'ai Nana and the Korihiki were the only two classes of people that could claim land that they call Alorio. Mm -hmm. Alorio is the land that the king is going to sign accompanied by the Minister of Interior. When you got that, they couldn't address possess, they couldn't condemn, they couldn't take it because they want this nothing. That land is in the name forever. Even in the death, they cannot touch the land. Okay, so anyway, um, so after it went through that particular process, and it would be in their particular name, in 1850, the Kuliana Act, it allowed the Makai Nana to come because why? The Makai Nana, which were like, I call them like the tillers of the earth. Mm -hmm. They were there when the Korehiki would battle on the different islands. So they were there to you know, take care of their wounds and, and everything they went through to feed them. And that's what they did. So the king was very grateful. And that's why only the Makai Nana, who carried the blood, and the Korehiki was the only two who could make a claim. Now, this is very important of what I just said, because something is coming up. Mm -hmm. So that particular act doesn't involve anybody else. So I'm going to jump right here so you folks can see, because I'm going to fast forward to 2006. In 2006, there were many people from the different islands here in Hawaiian Islands who was complaining to Rowena Akana because they were being kicked off this lands that had Land Commission Award or Royal Patents. And so, um, and it was coming from the Rural Property Tax Office. So, what happened is that she went ahead and battled, and I spoke to her a week before the election happened, and of course, as we know, she didn't make it. And she said she had to take the city council because they regulate and they increase the taxes for the Rural Property Tax Office. So when she went there, she had to begin with, she had to begin with the Hawaiian Kingdom of the Land Commission Awards, and the Royal <coughs> Patents, the Kuliana Land, and when they heard that, all of them unanimously agreed and believed that the Maka'i Nana should not be paid anything. What they did was they passed what they call an ordinance. So in the city council, they have ordinances. In the state legislature, they have acts. Because they're two legislative bodies. The city has a legislative body, which the city council, uh, you know, the city council is one legislative body, and then you have the state. So what happened is that um, it was brought before Mufi Hanuman, and took him one year to sign. Don't know why, he's a Polynesian and he refused to sign. One year later, he was getting pressure, he ended up signing. That became an ordinance, okay, that's 2006. What happened is that in talking to um, Rowena Kana, and she was sharing with me that the people from the other islands was talking to their city council and they didn't want to do it. So they went back to talk to Rowena Kana and she went to all the rest. And so when she saw some resistance, she ended up with the people on the different islands who have their senators and house of representatives for the state to go forward to create a bill so that it can go within the state because if the state passes it, it blankets the whole city and county. According to her, that's what happened. They went to the state a couple years later and they were able to blanket the same thing that the recognition of the Kuliana Act allows the Maka'i Nana who can prove that they are direct blood heir to the original uh, Land Commission awardee, they would have the right to come in. They chose someone, um, they chose Oha to be the one to pretty much navigate through all of this and make sure people bring in their genealogy and so forth. Her name is Lucy Myers. So this is going on for 12 years, guys, because this is from 2006. And um, I, I have to tell you, it was last week, I called her for the first time. And I just assumed she would know what she was doing. So when she came on the phone, I said, Aloha, this is my Helen Kahana Oi, I'm just asking some questions. And I said, I'm just inquiring, what do we need in order for, um, you know, there to be, um, what do you call it, an approval regarding the Kuliana lands under the Kuliana Act of 1850. And she said, okay, you need to bring your genealogy that you, you're related by blood to the original recipient. And it was like 1850, 51, 52. And I said, okay. And she said, and the second thing you have to show me is the, that you are the current owner and it's on the real property tax map key. I go, oh, and I go, what? <laughs> and I go, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. I said, okay, so what do you mean by that? She said, okay, so I just told you, 
you need to show you the current owner. And I said, and if I can show you that I'm related to the original ORD, but I'm not the current owner, she said, I can't help you. And I go, okay, I think we got one problem. Yeah. So I told her, do you know, have you ever read the Kulian Act? She goes, yeah, I know what it is. I said, are you sure? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, why? And I said, because you're commingling with two laws. I said, the basis of the approval under the city council is to recognize the Kuliana Act of 1850. That's specifically under the Hawaiian Kingdom. You have to follow Hawaiian Kingdom law. But if you're saying that the second criteria is that you have to be the current owner on the tax map key, I think we're going to get one problem because the tax map key has nothing to do with Kuliana land, okay, which is a land commission of work. And then she said no, and I said yes. And I said, you're using two laws and you cannot do that. Now, I'm sharing this with you folks because this is so important. Because if you get this, you can see the connection of what's really going on. Because the city and county or the council, when they approved it 12 years ago, it's still good to today. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means they're recognizing kingdom law. And to recognize the Kuliana Act of 1850 says a lot for our people on all the islands. Okay? So anyway, um, it was kind of like going back and forth and you know and, and I, I never met her before but you know I just said I, you know I'm just saying that it doesn't make sense that they can bring their genealogy and they can prove and she goes yeah it doesn't matter but you, you know you gotta you know she said you have to prove you're the current owner I said are you aware from you know 1890s you know that they were stealing our lands they got rid of all the you know, Kuliana land owners and their heirs and they kicked them off. And then decided to sell it by auctioning the lands in the 1900s by way of the territory of Hawaii. And she said, yeah, well, doesn't matter. So, you know, it's it kind of like, okay, you're from Oa, you're Hawaiian, I know, I know the voice. <laughs> and I said, but this is something that is gonna be a big problem, you know. And so, after talking with her and really couldn't get anything changed and this and that, you know, I just said, okay. And so anyway, after that I hung up, and then I was thinking, okay, so I'm either gonna call one of the trustees, uh, and I spoke to him a couple weeks ago, which is the chairman himself, and that's another story in itself. He's a nice guy, he really is. But the, the, the second lead is I'm thinking, I'm gonna call Kamana. Now I know Kamana is a good guy. I called him because she's not a trustee, she works under the administration. So I figured I'm gonna call him, so I called, and he didn't answer. And then later on that afternoon, I had a call, but I was already busy. And so anyway, um, the secretary of coming out called me, and then she said, Mayalani, and I go, yeah. She said, okay, I called you last week, and I think it was kind of late. I said, okay. And then she said, coming out is in a meeting, we'll meet you next week. And then she said, but she believed that she can open up a day for me to meet with him. So she said, you can tell me. And I started to share with her that this is very urgent. Because she also said that she denied people who had the bloodline, but because they're not the current owner on the tax map key, goodbye. You know, and I, and I also told her this. I said, you cannot use the tax map key. And she goes, why not? I said, because the tax map key was created at about 1945. And she said, and? And I said, if you understand this, I told her, I had a letter 25 years ago. And I knew the person who was heading the tax map key. The letter he gave me to say that we do not you know, um, tell anybody that this is the owners that you see on the tax map keys. And, and he was just validating for me. And I, I'm sharing this with her because I said, I need you to know this. And I said, because it was created in 1945 for one reason. And the reason was for assessment purposes. Because some land is residential, some land is uh, commercial, and, you know, and agricultural and pastoral. So they have different tax on the particular land. And I said, so, you know, because of that, they say they own the tax map key. So if they own the tax map key, that means they're saying they own all the lands, if that's the case, right? Because they own the tax map key. And she said, the owners come from the tax map key. And I said, okay, this is not going well. <laughs> so anyway, I told her, you cannot do that. And she said, no. Oh, and I said, do you know who Jason is? The one she said, yeah, I know him. And I said, Jason will validate for you because I know what you all you know, your, your papers to once they meet your criteria, it goes to him because he's the head. And he himself says, oh, no, 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 no. We don't tell you just because the name is there. It's coming from our office. 
We can never tell you you are. You got to go to court. You got to prove it. Or you're bringing a certified um, title search. And I know because I did that in 1994, I think it was, and, and it cost me 3500 for this title search. I took it to them, and they were able to see, okay, Parker Ranch, you need to get off. This is her land. And I yeah. pretty much fought the Parker, Parker Ranch, and I, and I won against them. Wow. Yeah, and you know, I mean, you know, they're just big names. So, you know, I'm makai na na. Like, I really care, right, about, you know, the corporate side. So anyway, I could sense that she was coming from a place of, oh, you, you know what I mean, kind of like questioning, right? So anyway, um, after I hung up, I talked. So now there's a meeting that I'm going to um, this week to meet with um, Kamanao because she knew when I was talking to her, this is urgent. I said, if people find out of what you folks are doing, it's not going to be a pretty picture because if the you're taking today from the tax map key you're gonna see majority of them is Asians and, and I'm not against no Asians okay I got grandchildren who's you know I mean that you know works. mixed plate okay? that but works. that's not the point it's the law that you gotta follow and when you recognize the Kuliana Act of 1850 you get recognition to the Hawaiian Kingdom whether you like it or not and it is and you cannot commingle take two laws and try to mash them together so the people who came and had the right to connect to that uh, particular original recipient is all that needed to be, okay? They didn't need to show that they're the owners because their lands have been stolen or their grandparents or great-grandparents' land have been stolen. So anyway, so I did talk to, um, what do you call, uh, the, the secretary, she did that, you know, and so we're gonna be meeting today, I mean, this week coming, uh, no, not this week, I'm sorry, wait, not this week, next week, next week, which is, what is it, it's Saturday, yeah, so this week coming, and, you know, I'm the type of person that, when, when I read the kingdom laws, if I can see the kingdom law in action, in the things that I've seen in the kingdom days, and it's being brought up today, I will use that, whether it's in court or against anybody, and I will stand on those things, no matter what, so, I needed to share that with you because a lot of people say, if this is Crown Lands, how how come you get LCA, Land Commission Awards, all over the place? And I said, that's because only the Makai Nana, by kingdom law, allow them to make claims on Crown Lands. Konehiki could not. And that's why you're going to notice that. See, there's no royal patent in Land Commission Award from the time you hit Nanakuli all the way to Waianae because they're Crown Lands. Oni Makaha is not. Makaha is private land because it has a royal patent and then it has a, a land commission award and it's on the Abner Park Key. In fact, oh, she's not here. He did he leave? Okay. Anyway, uh, so one of my securities, uh, his name is Andy and he just left. And I think it's 2243 that is a royal patent for that particular land. But like I said, Oni Makaha, everything else over here is all crown lands. There's a lot of LCA all over in here because they had a right to claim on Crown land. Okay, now. Yes, okay, what? 10 to 16. 10 to 16. What is it? 10216. Oh, yeah, 10216. And I think it's like 4,000 something acres, right? Yeah, over 4,000 acres. So all of Maha has one Royal Patrick One Link Commission Award. Okay, so. You, you, you have to see this in this particular light because although um, OHA meant well, you cannot begin to process something that may be affecting people if you don't read the law. If you don't understand the law, you're going to hurt them more than you think you're going to help them. So for me, I need to tell them that you're not doing it correctly. And I, by the way, I got everything that's certified and it's legislative acts that I certify. Um, uh, I want to I also share this with you. I'm going I'm to show you guys something right now. Okay. This is a map. And this map, <laughs> actually it's a brochure. I, ha I have the map, but I don't know who I loaned it to. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. So, anybody ever saw this? 
Okay, I'm going to pass this around. Okay, you can just kind of scan it. Can we take pictures of it? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, this, before, before it goes around, this particular map is the entire downtown Chinatown. All of it. Okay. It goes from the municipal building all the way to Aala Park. There is LCA for Peace Grants, all Hawaiian, in here. Okay, and then you're gonna see numbers. You're gonna see the Iolani Palace. You're gonna see all these numbers because this is a land commission award 247 William Charles Donalilo on the Iolani Palace grounds. You're gonna find raw patents all over the place. Will you see the court? Every single courtroom sits on royal patent land. Every courtroom in every island. I kid you not. We have it all. Okay. Now to turn the other side. All that numbers that's all, all over the land, every single person is on there. And you're going to find majority of them is all the Konihiki that you're going to see over here. So I actually had one with Waikiki because the whole Waikiki <laughs> has LCA RPs grants. And we got all that names too. And you know, sometimes when you let somebody you forget who it is and then I'm going to return it so, because I got to remember who it is. So I now keep all my stuff, but I'm open to share with you folks. And you guys want to see this? Yeah. Okay, so we just want to go ahead and maybe we can just hold it and just walk slowly in and turn the front and the back and everybody can see. And then later on, you guys can come up and check out the map. Okay, and you can take pictures if you want. And it goes back into the 1800s, okay? So like I said, you're going to find everywhere. In fact, um, okay, you know where um, the post office is just down, downtown on Richard Street? Yeah. If you're in the palace and you're facing Makai, you, you see the, um, the post office, and then there's the commitment statue on the left, right? Right behind is Queen Street, right guys? Do you know that that's where the boats used to be right there? That was a pier. And all the ships right there. So you can see a lot of the filling of how certain places are, just like Sand Island, that's all filled. That land was never there. Okay, all landfill. But right behind, right on King, right on Queen Street, is where all the piers, all the boats used to park. That's how close it was. Okay? So it's important that we know our history, our genealogy, not of also of one another, but also for the land. Because the land is what ties to you, which ties to the law. If you know who you are, then I'm going to guarantee you all these things, Allah, all these things is going to be tied back to you. Okay? I know it's very interesting, that thing. And you know, um, I can tell you that this for sure, you can only find it. You can go to the archives, but they don't have no certified copy. That was given to me um, quite a while. You can get them at the mission house behind, um, what is that church? Hawaii Hall. Right behind Hawaii Hall. They sell this particular map over there. I don't know if it's there, because every time when you go, it's like so long. But if you tell them which particular map, this is the brochure that, you know, that they will give to you. You can just purchase it. And it looks so much nicer, because the other map is, you know, huger than that. Okay? So, and the reason why I bring up about the land because it doesn't matter what's on the land. It, it matters what is the backing of the land. What laws does it follow? Okay? And who you are that will connect the land to you and what law is being used, it needs all those three. You, the land, the law. And that's all you need. Okay? Um, it's been like over 10, 12 years that we've been going into court. And my husband, he doesn't have enough fingers and toes. He won every case. And the reason why he won every case in the court is because when we go in the court, his paperwork that he puts out, he brings in all certified copies of the Royal Patents and the Land Commission Award from the um, Bureau of Commands. And then we submit it as evidence. And then what we do is we, we, we use this this verbiage, okay? And this verbiage is that we are invoking FRE 902. FRE 902 is Federal Rules of Evidence 902. It says that a certified document can be accepted in the court, but not only accepted in the court, the judge or the opposing attorney cannot challenge the merit. They have to accept it as if it's the original. 
Well, we were arrested in 2011. Our case took place in June, no, May 21st, 2012, and we won the case. We had the sheriffs, the police, we had the um, attorney general enforcement, and we had the, who was the other one? The DNR. All four of them came, over 200 of them came in there to take 2024. Well, when they did, and how they did it, they screwed up big time. They didn't have a court order, they didn't have a warrant, nothing, and we was in the holding cell. The next day, they took us to Kaneohe, and then ended up, we went home, and so I was pretty much training the council, and so we were doing a lot of mock trials, so they would be comfortable when they would go in. So I put the paperwork together, I templated it, and then each one of them had their own case, because they wanted to divide us, because they okay, they're Hawaiians, they're poor, they kind of hire an attorney, but we didn't need one attorney, because we knew the law. And we went ahead and did it, and we won. It took me 20, 25 minutes, in and out, we won. It was about 14 to 16 witnesses, not one of them could be heard, because I shut them down right in there, because we only use kingdom law. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, because you're gonna hear a lot of this going around, that the state doesn't recognize kingdom law. Oh, yes, they do, and they've done from the Republic of Hawaii times, okay? I need you. And I need you to, to look at it in the light which relates to you, okay? Um, Sometimes, you know, we get very excited when we hear different people speak. And so we just believe and we run with it and we say, oh, she said to do this, he said to do this, and I lost. That's your fault. Because I will tell you now, even with me, you need to do your due diligence. Don't believe everything everybody tell you. Oh, sound good. Okay, let's go. And I say, we this, we this. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we cannot be this. Because when we say we this, we just want to disconnect ourselves. So, never ever believe or trust, just like how the good, good word says in the Bible, you need to go ahead and do your own due diligence. Only then you're going to feel poor and you're going to take responsibility. It's like, okay, I did this, it's my fault. I chose to do this, and I did, okay? And it's okay, you know, because you're not judging nobody, right? But I'm going to share with you this, and, and I'm going to have this pass around. When the Republic took over, when the... Um, it was first the provisional government, then it was the Republic of Hawaii, the territory, and the state, and all of them. When it became the territory of Hawaii, they created what they call the Organic Act. And it had to do with the territory years. And so what they did was they took the kingdom laws and they said it's revised. Okay? And everybody got to understand, you revising? you somebody brand new, but you revising? It doesn't make sense. Well, anyway... The state of Hawaii has what they call the Hawaii Revised Statute. It's called HRS. The very first statutory provision is 1-1. One -one. Okay, and it's right here. And you can see that I got it off the offline, I mean online from, um, what do you call that, the state of Hawaii. Okay, this is their stuff. This is not mine. And when you're going to read this, it's going to reference this source of authority. Well, the source of authority says L1892, C57, S5. I'm going to decipher that for you. L1892 means the session laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom of 1892. C57 is chapter 57. S5 is section 5. This is what they're quoting. This is the session laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom of 1892. The state of Hawaii uses this as their laws. Are we listening? Yeah. Guys, if you don't know that they are using kingdom law because we're so used to, we're getting angry. We cannot get angry. we got to step out of the, you know, the, the bucket. Thing. It's our own people pulling us out. No, 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 we ain't safe. Stay here. But sometimes you have to explore, right? So you got to step out of the bucket. There's nothing wrong with that. You like jump back and go. <laughs> but so over here, they're telling you, that it is the first statutory provision. So they tell you this is their foundation, 1-1. But when they quote the source of authority, it's from here. Everything that they said, the, um, the citation meaning they're referencing, is in kingdom law. And you can see this is from the archives, okay? So why is that so important? Well, that's because that if your whole basis of your foundation is based on kingdom law, 
That means that everything you do, everything you do, whether it is criminally, whether you're trespassing, going to have to come from where? Going to have to come from kingdom law. It's not going to go from any place. Did you know that every time an attorney goes in to file something criminal, you know he uses the Hawaiian kingdom? Okay, so you got to know how to read. So I'm going to decipher things for you. So when they file criminal charges against you, they're going to put PC 1869. PC 1869 means the penal code of 1869 of the Hawaiian Kingdom government. <laughs> That's what they file. Okay? Everybody got that? And when they're going to do civil contracts and this and that, it's going to be CC 1859. So that means it's the civil code, because it's all contractual things, and it does with the deeds, it all affects the deeds, I mean, it all affects the Royal Path and Land Commission of One. 1859 of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Everything is on the first page. I won countless cases, traffic cases and all, because all I do is point to this, and when I go in there, they don't want me to talk. They go, who brought her in this courtroom? I kid you not, ask my husband. Everybody just sitting there, oh my gosh. And they go, why, why is she in this courtroom? Says, I don't know, the police did it. Why are they still stopping her? They're not supposed to stop me. And they stopped stopping us like for years, okay? And so that's because if I blow this up, we shut them down. Okay, because if you really understand who the United States is, then you're gonna know who all the states are, and when you identify that, you're gonna know, and I'm gonna tell you straight up, that we're not occupied, okay? I won't give you what coming from me because of how I can prove that, okay? Now it's really important, because who we are, we cannot change. We cannot change the color. It is what it is, you know, and um, and because of that, people mistaking you. So sometimes when they talk to you, they think that you know you're coming from the negative side because you know, like for instance, Ray. Ray is fair. They don't think she's on the other side. But little do they know. <laughs> little do they know about her. <laughs> but anyway, okay, getting back again. Now this is the very first statutory provision. If you're the state of Hawaii, why are you using Hawaii revised statutes? Because they're trying to revive the kingdom law. They copyright infringing. Okay? So when I go in court, I'm not afraid to say, are you, are you copyright infringing this? Oh, what do you mean? So get some new new judges that come in, and so they want to act up with me, and they said, oh yeah, they don't recognize the kingdom law. I said, okay, hold on. I bring my Karen on a letter 10 years old to, to, from today, and I show them that, and, and then he goes, did you not get this? I said, yes, I gave him a copy. He has it. And so he goes, but your honor, I mean, you know, da, da, da. and he goes, that is case dismissed. And I said, no, I don't want it dismissed. I asked him, well, I didn't even ask him, really tell him that I want the case to be vacated. Because vacated means they didn't have standing to bring me in the court in the first place. Mm -hmm. So don't ask, I don't think they, they dismiss your case, because if they dismiss with prejudice, that means they cannot bring it back in that courtroom. But they'll bring it up in other courts. If they dismiss with prejudice, wait, with prejudice, they cannot bring it back. If without, they can bring it back. That means you allow their so-called system to take over that. But when you come in on a vacate, and I know, because in one day, I had three cases, I didn't even have to go to all three, all got shut down, all would vacate. And then he said, oh, but don't you want me to dismiss the case? I said, no, I want you to vacate. He go, vacate, vacate. Ba -da 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 -da. I walk in, I'll get all the cops sitting down right there, all outside. And then after, so their attorney come out and they go, oh, okay, so we gotta go in. He go, oh, the sir, huh? And he goes, yeah, don't point. He goes, okay, we lost. He goes like, we lost, we lost, we lost. He's telling the cops over there because it was something very simple because I understand the kingdom law. And if you're using our law, then who are you? You know, when I look at a US citizen, I look at them as being illegal immigrants. Okay, every US citizen is an illegal immigrant. And if anybody tell any of you Kanakas you're an illegal immigrant, no you're not. Tell them, show me my paper that I want to sign to be naturalized in there. Show me. And they cannot, that's the only thing they can use to prove that you are a US citizen. None of us signed it. They made us like, automatic we are. Or automatic we are not. So know your true identity, okay? Now, the only reason why, and, 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 this is, I cannot say it's my opinion when I say what I say, and I'm not here to hurt anybody's feeling when it comes to um, uh, the occupation. And so let me just show you my view, 
and how it you folks accept it, you know, I'm okay with it, where you at? She's down on her whatever. It's okay, okay? <laughs> so, and the reason why I want to tell you is that when I look at something that is being raised, I don't just look at the face value. I'm going to dig into that thing very deeply and how it affects our particular country. And I got all the different laws and, you know, and you got it, um, I think it's under chapter six, yeah, the laws of occupation, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, Leon? Chapter six, right? Sure. Okay. And I think they're using FM 27-10. FM is the field manual. You're going to see a lot of things in there because they will tell you that during occupation, it's temporary. And temporary means there's no government that's running and operating in your country. When it does, they gotta leave, okay? That's why they keep trying to divide all our Hawaiians who's in different factions. Because they know that everybody like they achieve, so no worry, we're not gonna get no problems with them. And it seems to be correct. And we allowing them because we really don't know. Everybody get ideas, and they're good ideas. But if we come together and throw our ideas on a table, we can come up with a solution. I really, really believe that. Okay. So, now, and, and in a, a state of occupation, you cannot leave the island. Nobody can come in these islands. That's occupation. Only uniformed soldiers or military who's a belligerent occupant will occupy all the ports. And not only that, they will take over the legislative body. They're called the military governor. The military governor is the highest official under the, the military command um, that is supposedly occupying your country, like how they did in Iraq. You know how they was able to take over Iraq? Iraq? All they had to do was take out the palace. The palace is where the head sits. That's why they took only the Iolani palace. They didn't touch any place else but that Iolani palace to take the queen. But if we don't understand in what capacity they was operating then we're going to think the United States is this big country, they get big military, they get tanks. Oh, but when you begin to understand what I'm going to be sharing with you folks, you're going to understand why. Oh my gosh, okay? Uh, okay, so get back again. So there's many things, I mean, and there's curfew. Occupation, 6 o'clock, everybody home. Lights off, camera off, action, nothing, black everywhere. My mom was living during the 1841, I mean 1941 war and everything, and everybody would have to be like that during the 1941 time, okay? If it was still the same today, we would not be able to sit here at this time. We would have to be home in our house, and everybody had to paint the windows black. And every place you go in the banks, there's armed guards. We don't have that here. We're free to go wherever we like go, however long we like take, and come back when we feel like coming back. Okay, and, and it's important for us to have the understanding. Okay, so what am I trying to get? Okay, hold on. So I don't know if I shared this, a lot. I think I did. You got my, <coughs> the, um, the trading, yeah, that. Is it here? No, I think I brought it, hold on. That's some stuff over here, I gotta check this out, hold on. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, and I'm not trying to knock anybody down, but many people want to help us, and it's us who have to find ourselves. It's a self discovery. Just because people talk and, you know, they may sound good and everything, and you get, get you inside and you all in, and you're going in, and then you fall. You gotta take responsibility. I should have checked this. What does this mean? When was it created? Who's involved? Who had the authority? And this and that and so forth. Our people, because there's so many people out there that really want to help anything they find right on the surface, boom, here it is. But unless you go deep and you go underneath, only then you can find the truth. Okay? So, like the Royal Patents and Land Commission Award, if you guys wanna write this down, just leave it in your head. Okay, it's HRS, which is Hawaii Revised Statutes. That's what the state is under. They're all bound under that. Every judge, every attorney, mayor, governor, judicial, legislative, and all of them. One HRS 172-11, you know what it says in there? It says that 172-11, it's an HRS, that 
is referencing to kingdom law again. So remember how I told you how L81892 was the session laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom of 1892? This one is L1872. So what does that mean? Session the session laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom of 1872. They're using that to reflect on Hawaii Revised Statute in there. And guess what that statute is about? That they recognize all the Land Commission Award and the Royal Patent. And they said that even if, if the original Hawaii had deceased, or he had alienated his real estate, alienated meaning they, he sold his real estate. They didn't say land, they said real estate. He goes, the name of that person is still on the map and on the records still today. That is the state who said that. Okay, you, see, you hear what I'm saying? So when people said, no, they don't recognize kingdom law. Oh yes, they do. There's hundreds and hundreds of places taken verbatimly out of the kingdom law that you can find. So, because I'm familiar now with everything, but, you know, a lot, okay, so I'm going to read you another one. This is HRS chapter 12, 7-1. And I'm going to read you this, and the reason why I'm going to read you this when I get my glasses, hold on. I know, I wear glasses too. On your head. 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 On Oh yeah. In fact, all of these things I'm talking about, you first can all come to the table and check everything, take picture. Okay? So actually, you gotta make coffee. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's expensive. Coffee. Take picture. Okay, so when you when you get 19 grandchildren, you get nine kids. This one. <laughs> okay. So again, this is HRS chapter 12, section 7-1. And it is called building materials, comma, water, comma, etc. Landlord's title subject to tenant's use. Where the landlords have obtained or may, may hereafter obtain allodial titles to their lands. So what law are we talking about? No, what law? What law? They're talking kingdom law because the word allodial. They don't use allodial in the state, city, and federal. Uh -uh. Because if they do, they know they don't have no power on this, okay? So it says, allow your titles to their lands. The people, okay, and that's the Makai Nana who get all these LCA. They're talking about these people. The people on each of their lands shall not be deprived of the right to take firewood, house timber, aho cord, thatch, or key leaf from the land on which they live for their own private use. But they shall not have a right to take such articles to sell for profit. And I'm sorry, even the flowers they take to sell, they cannot even do that. That's kingdom law, okay? It says the people, watch this, especially you farmers. The people shall also have a right to drinking water and running water and the right of way. <coughs> you know what the right of me, way means? You can go wherever you like on the roads. You're, you're not obligated to be licensed and all these things because that's not kingdom law why they're stopping you today. The springs of water, running water, and roads, roads, shall be free to all. Mm. On all lands granted in fee simple, provided that this shall not be applicable to wells and water courses which individuals have made for their own use. I'm not sure if you guys get wells over here, but in Ha'ula and Ie, they have a lot of the uh, wells that's underneath, plenty of them underneath there, okay? So, and wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote you, we can find it. So it's CC1859. What is CC1859? Anybody remember? Civil Code, Civil code. Civil code of 1859 of what? Hawaiian what government? Kingdom. Hawaiian Kingdom. This is in the HRS, guys. Are you guys beginning to see stuff? See, we cannot listen. People say, no, no, they're not following Kingdom law. Oh, yeah, they are. And when you find it, you use it, okay? Because it's who you are. And so anyway, um, and it says um, section 1477. So 1477 is a section you find in the law book, and I'm gonna tell you, I don't know what happened, I was going through the back, I don't know. But anyway, we have the compiled laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom, and the compiled laws mean penal code and civil code. So PC and CC, and it's compiled, and there's some amendments to it and, and so forth. 
But that is where they're quoting in the 1-1, I told you earlier, and now in the 172-11, the CC 1859, section 1477, he can find it in that Kingdom Law book. Okay. Now, I don't have it with me over here, but there is a law in the state of Hawaii that says that any cases that have been adjudicated during the Kingdom area, um, era that they cannot interfere with. Okay? Everybody heard what I just said? Okay, so let me give you something else that I'm going to validate that from. Let's go back to 1-1. I'm going to read this to you as you're going to hear what I'm going to tell you how they write it. And it says, it's the common law of the state, like the state of Hawaii, exceptions. It says the common law of England, oh, excuse me, the common law of England as ascertained by English and American decisions is declared to be the common law of the state of Hawaii in all cases except as otherwise expressly provided by the Constitution or laws of the United States or by the laws of the state. Or, we're going on or, fixed by Hawaiian judicial precedent. Anybody can tell me what I just said. If we approved it before, it's still good. So what it, he, he's close. So what it means by or fixed by Hawaiian judicial precedent, they say in any cases that was adjudicated during the kingdom area, because they say Hawaiian, it can still be held in the courts today. See, we don't even know that. And if you guys will look at all our kingdom cases, and you can go to Supreme Court, the one um, <coughs> behind kingdom in Mia statue, that's the Supreme Court. You can pull hundreds and hundreds of cases, thousands, and they have all the volumes. And all those cases, and what is telling you that if you're not following this law of the state of Hawaii or this constitution, it says, or Hawaiian judicial precedent. So when you go into court and you want to quote a case, 1857, let's say, oh no, let's go to 1851. This particular um, case in 1851 is um, uh, P. Coy versus Kapena. And P. Coy was suing Kapena because he said he didn't have the title. In the kingdom, if you want to sue anybody about land, you being the plaintiff, you the moving party going in, you cannot come in the court, sue anybody unless you hold the Land Commission Award, the LCA, or the RP. If not, they're not even letting you come in the court in the kingdom. So it's the same today. So let's say Kapua, she know she can rob past the Land Commission Award and she's going to go in the court and she's going to go against the state of Hawaii, okay? She has to prove that she has what? A royal patent or a land commission award. Okay, because not everybody who had a land commission award went ahead and got the royal patent for two reasons. Number one, they died. And number two, they couldn't afford to pay a certified surveyor. Okay, and they didn't have the money to pay the commutation. But the land commission award was sufficient to prove you have the right to the land. Okay, so who would win? She would win. Why? Because she will quote the very law that they're quoting in the kingdom. And because she is who she is in her identity, she will win. I can say that because these are things that we've done. I'm not going to tell you, but try this on precisely. See, see how this going to work for you. You got to, you got to, um, I don't like you to use the word got to, but if you want to do it, <laughs> I can say we've done it before. Yeah. It doesn't work for everyone. And I'm going to tell you why. And it's not because um, they're doing it wrong. Absolutely not. It's because whoever the judge is, whoever the attorneys are, let me tell you, they all cahoots together, conspiring yep. for certain individuals who they cannot allow to win the case. Even if she has everything going for her, or he has everything going for her, they cannot lose that particular fight. So when they saw me at the beginning, they didn't take anything. Today, they don't want me in the courtroom, I mean, very nicely. I get a few judges like that, and I get other judges when the case is over, they got to tell the sheriff, oh, bring, bring her own majesty in the back, because that's how they recognize me. So when everybody walks out, the sheriff, he comes to me, he goes, okay, uh, judge wants to see you. I go, for what? And then he goes, he wants to see you. I said, okay, and this is the sheriff. So I go to the back, he disrobes, he said, how are you, her own majesty, my head? I said, how are you, Judge Tarikal? And I'm in the back, because they already know, because when I go in there, my, my attitude got to be one of aloha. You got to go in with aloha. No matter what you feeling, you got to go in with that because they will respect you. And if you don't have the respect, you're not going to win. 
you got to have the respect and you got to show them that you know who I am, you know what, I'm, I'm showing you, but it's up to you how you going to do this. And you know, and because of that, we won a lot of cases. We're back in the, um, the, the 80s, 90s, going on to the 2000s. And so you're going to get different um, judges with different stripes. And so to protect from the whole structure, because they're all puppets, they're going to have to knock down certain people. You know, and when they go going to fight for their life, that really, okay, I'm sorry, but I said this pisses me off. Because they're fighting for what they know and for what they believe. But I tell you this, it takes you individually to make up your mind if you know or if you want to be what you know you should be. Because only then you can talk, talk about all the lands and this and that, or they're taking my land away. Nobody can take the land, put them in the pocket and run away. It ain't gonna go no place, it's still here. We just gotta get this going, and we gotta know what is our true identity, because the identity gonna attach you to the land, which attaches you to your law. And in here, every piece, the Supreme Court recognizes, you guys remember years ago, when uh, the Supreme Court says that, oh, because um, the, uh, the state legislature wanted to sell the lands in Maui? And then, um, so they went ahead and I think, what's his name? That guy, oh, what was his name? A um, couple of attorney generals were Mark Bennett. So they were so upset because of the fact that the attorney, I mean, the Supreme Court says that you have to ask us, the people, for permission. And they didn't like it. So they took him all the way to Washington, D.C. Supreme Court. And guess what happened? Because they knew about the laws that is international law that our lads are already covered with. You know what they did? They sent it back here because they affirmed the decision of the Supreme Court. And they, and they told them, you can bring the land cases up here. That'll be settled in your own country. The Supreme Court kicked it. They couldn't do it. And so that was Mark Bennett and, you know, and Linda Lingo and all of this. So you got to really watch what they're trying to do because it's all about the money. Uh, I want, I want those Could things. I sure. On that particular case. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually, I, I followed that case and I was there at the Supreme Court. Yeah, you was, did. So I got your yeah. letters. <laughs> um, and actually, what happened was that when the, the Hawaii State Supreme Court ruled in favor, and Osorio was was one of the first plaintiffs. Yeah, who sued. John, right? Yeah, John Osorio. And then Oha stepped in because, because the case actually went on for 14 years. Yeah, and so by, by the time that it was getting to, to making a decision, because they had worked their way through all the state courts and appeals and back and forth. So by the time it was getting to the end there with the state Supreme Court, Oha stepped in because they had the bankroll. And so they, they, they came in and they said, okay, well, we'll, we'll help with Kokua, you guys, and we'll step into the case. And so they did. Um, uh, anyway, so then it went up, what happened was that the state Supreme Court uh, ruled because the argument that OHA was presenting was that the, um, that the lands are clouded, the title to the lands are clouded, because it says so in the apology law. And uh, so the state Supreme Court said the apology law said that the lands were never relinquished, Therefore, there's a cloud on title, and therefore they ruled in favor of Osorio and Oha and those guys. So the state Supreme Court didn't like that. I mean, the state of Hawaii didn't like that, Mark Bennett and those guys. So they appealed to the uh, Supreme Court. And so the Supreme Court picked it up and they went there. They went to the Supreme Court. Now, um, I was really interested in, in the direction they were going. When they actually entered the court and when they started giving the arguments, usually they only have one hour to present a case in that court. And so the, the, the state gave it, I mean, the, yeah, the state gave it its, its, uh, its uh, case. Then the, uh, the OHA gave it its, its, its arguments. And then there was another party, and I don't remember what that party was. I think it might have been the U.S. Um, representative. Anyway, so um, the state, when, when they got up to argue, the Supreme Court justices, you know, the justices can interrupt you anytime. You, you, you don't, you, you start talking and the justice will jump in and he'll ask you a question and all that. So, so before the state got in very far, the, the justices were on it already. And they were asking cases, uh, 
they were asking questions about title. But what about the title to this land and all that? And as they were asking these questions, the state was trying to, the state actually said they have perfect title because they received the lands from the United States. Oh. And so, and that was their argument. And, and, and the Supreme Court justices were shaking their heads. Said, you know, this is not a, not a real argument. Anyway, so when the state, when the OHA got up there, this was a big surprise. OHA sold us out. Yep. They basically said, the state, we agree, the state has perfect title. But they have a fiduciary duty to the Native Hawaiians so that the revenues from those lands have to come to Native Hawaiians. And the justices were shocked. And one of them said, what are we doing here? If, if, you know, <laughs> there's no argument here uh, if we're talking about title. Anyway, so they went back and forth. They, uh, they basically, the, the justices were really, really shocked at this claim of perfect title and that the OHA was actually agreeing to it. But what had happened in this case is that there's, there's something called a um, amicus brief. And amicus briefs are, are filed by, well, Melody knows, friend but the friend of the court, right. And so there were 32 states that had filed amicus briefs on behalf <coughs> of the state of Hawaii. Why? Because a decision on who owns the lands could affect them and the Native Americans that they took their lands from. And so 32 states were trying to stop a, a ruling in favor of, of OHA. And, and uh, anyway, so um, the justices eventually kind of set back and said, well, the real question before us is what the state had presented to them, which was, does the apology, can the apology law cast a cloud on the title of the Hawaiian lands? And they basically said the apology law had no such power to do so because there was a previous law, which was the Statehood Act, yeah. which, um, which actually gave these titles, so-called gave these titles. So the apology law could not actually change a Statehood Act without being specific about its uh, challenge to the, to the title. So what they did was they, they ruled in favor of um, the state and said that the apology law could not have been, was, was misused by the state Supreme Court to, uh, to validate that the lands were clouded. Now they didn't say the lands weren't clouded, they just said you used the wrong law. To, you know. And so they sent it back here. So OHA and, and the state of Hawaii, of course, were nervous about this whole thing. And so they went into a settlement. John Osorio refused to settle. And they tried to kick him out of the case. And they never were successful in kicking him out of the case. Um, and so the case was eventually settled between the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and the state of Hawaii. And it was the Kaka'ako lands that they traded. Yeah, that's what the settlement was. Um, so it was a real sellout on the part of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Osorio still has the option to raise the question again if another question of the title comes up. So, so he can actually bring this back up because he never uh, withdrew from the case. So that's what it is. So right after the um, the case, I was driving back up to New York with a, with a friend who had been with me to, to watch this case. And we were both astounded because what it told us was that the Supreme Court, first of all, was most interested in the, the question of title. And they were not at all convinced the state had title. You know, I mean, it was really obvious by their statements that they made. Um, and so we thought, would, it'll be great if we could get Osorio or somebody else to reopen the case and, and really press this. So we actually called several law firms, really well-known law firms, and the top law firms in the country that argued before the Supreme Court all said, yes, we will take it. But we have a contingency fee, which was $150,000 just to start. Yeah. And so uh, there were a couple that, that said that they could do it on, um, on, uh, what you, on contingency. Or actually, pro, what was the pro other term? Pro, pro, pro bono? Pro bono. Pro bono. Yeah. Um, but we thought that they would not be motivated enough <laughs> to, 
to do it pro bono. And so, so we, we discussed and we said, we'd rather go with one we have to pay, uh, even if we have to raise the funds. We never got around to doing that. But anyway, so that's what it was. The, the, the case is still open, and there are lawyers willing to go after it. Uh, uh, but I, we don't even have to, because we're going to restore the thing. <laughs> uh, I wanted to um, just expand a little bit on what Leon was saying. Um, you know, we were at the palace for seven years, Monday through Friday, running the wine kingdom, um, having uh, my sheriffs and my marshal um, deliver everywhere to the governor and everybody. And what we did is what we use is what is called involuntary dissolution. I don't know if any of you know that, but when you open up a business, you go to the DCCA and it's you know, connected to the post office downtown on the left side, there's the white pillars. Well, it's on the second floor, and that's where, you, if you want to, you know, run a business, then you go over there. It's called the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, right? But anyway, um, why was I getting to the point? There's a reason why I was talking. What, what was I saying? I just lost my train of thought. Involuntary dissolution. Okay, involuntary dissolution. So what we did is we sent involuntary dissolution to the governor, the mayor, and everybody because they are a foreign corporation, but they are a bankrupt one. The day that they were served by our um, sheriffs, and this is in 2007, <clears throat> maybe about half an hour to 45 minutes, we were at our office on Iolani Avenue, and we get this call. And the call came from the chief of staff under Linda, uh, what's her name, Lingo, Linda Lingo? And so they wanted to meet, you know, with me and my staff. So I asked them, asked them if she's going to sit in there. She's going to sit in there. I'll go. If not, I don't have to go. I'll just send the counterparts of who we had. And so anyway, she said she wasn't going to be in there. Okay, fine. So they had their attorney general. We had ours. You know, they had a judge. We had ours. You know, they had certain people, what they call in the state of Hawaii, well, we had our certain people in the kingdom. And they sat almost 45 minutes and they said, okay, so haven't we been helping the white people? We've created this, we've created that because the involuntary dissolution is a right for a government and this is governments across the world who has a right to shut down a corporation if you didn't pay your taxes, you didn't file your annual reports, you didn't, you know, um, um, what do you call it? You didn't list all your officers and all these different things you were supposed to do. Exactly, and we did that, and they went Panicsville. I mean, we had the title companies calling us. We had the real property taxes office because we was ready to shut down the real estate board and the title companies who's making all this humbug for our people. Because it doesn't just take the bank to do this. It takes the insurance company, the title company, you know, the real estate, and you know, and the judges to work in cahoots together. So we sent it all out, and they were all calls was going all over the place. And so they was trying to work with us. And so we knew that they were a corporation and many people didn't know at that time. So it was the way we introduced it because we use the kingdom laws of how you dissolve a corporation under the kingdom law. Hmm. And so anyway, and there was a, a lot of connection and I think that's why our, um, our license plate and our IDs, we could use that at the bank. I could go islands, all of us, with just our ID. We could drive with our license plate and whatever, and if we go to court, we win the cases. You know, because you get a lot of rookies in there, and that's not their fault. But there was a lot of things that was happening because I was taking it from another angle. Not just go over there and say, oh, you know, I want to evict you because you're on the land. If you take, like, the involuntary dissolution, you're telling them, I know you're a corporation, you're a foreign corporation, plus you're bankrupt, I'm dissolving you because we are the kingdom. And pretty much everything just started sparking up after that. Hey, how you shot? <laughs> so anyway, um, and pretty much uh, a lot of different things had happened. Okay, so over time, um, what happened is that we. Uh, oh, and I wanted to show you this. You know that one that guys I was talking to you about. This one. Okay. So I like to always back up what they have to prove you following our laws. You know following your own because it's not yours you're just copying ours so went to the archives and you remember the HRS 172-11 that I talked about earlier okay so this is from the Hawaiian uh, from the archives and this will tell you it's 1872 
It's funny how they call it 172-11, right? But this is the 1872 from the archives that back up that HRS 172-11. So we don't just take it face value. We need to attach it to the law that can stand up and hold you up when you go into court. Okay, so that's that one. Um, there was one over here that, okay, this one. So again, it referenced to um, chapter 57. Remember, I was telling you guys on the 1-1, 8 l 1892 c chapter 57. So again, we went to archives and we have it certified, the original chapter 57 out of the legislative book of the White Kingdom, it's here. So the stuff that they write to support them is actually our stuff. And this is how you back it up, you bring certified. If you don't bring certified, they don't care. Like you guys remember a couple years ago they had like maybe about two or three hundred people and they were trying to fight for a hockey pool. You guys remember that? Have a whole bunch of all these wines coming in. And actually, you know what they were fighting for? A one and a half acre. And about 200 people, but they were really related. So, you know, if they're going to ask me for help, I would, I would tell them, I said, okay, the most important thing is that whatever you find, make sure that if you can get them from certain state agencies, you have to certify it. Because when you submit it into court, they got to take it. And do you know? that that's what they didn't do. And the opposing side said, oh, we will invoke this and this because we got certified documents, not them. And they lost, we was in the court. Every time we went in there, they lost because they couldn't back up the stuff they had. So something simple, go get it certified. That was all they needed to do and they would have won. So these are some of the things that I want to share with you guys so that you guys know. So what you do is you find the document, like if you go to the Bureau of Convention or the archives, and when you find it, you tell them, I want this certified. Before they could do it one day, now they take two weeks. I don't know why, but we got something we're waiting two weeks for right now anyway. But that's how you do. You go to the counter in the archives, which is located on the Eolani Palace grounds. You pull it, and uh, well, actually you have to write it down, look for what books it is, and they'll pull it up for you. You say, this, can I have this certified? Okay, you fill it out, and then um, they're going to call you when it's ready, and then you come and you pick it up, and it'll be written like this. This is the kind of paper that all the courts recognize. They recognize this paper. Yes, Charlie? They plan to digitize everything. Huh? They plan to digitize everything. Yeah, and, and, you know, and they're doing that purposefully because yeah, they're perfect. trying to do it on a computer. Right. But neither here nor there, you can still get it certified that way without them going through the computer because you want that acknowledgement that it came from that agency. Okay? So, anyway. You know, it's not enough that you just find something like on the surface. Uh, one more important thing I wanted to show you, and it's HRS 601. Wait, wait, 601-1. So why is that important? Okay, I'll read to you why it's important. <laughs> it says, judiciary, period. There shall be a branch of government style the judiciary. Okay, now my, I'm reading one HRS. 601-1, Judiciary. Here is their reference, their source of authority. L1892, sound familiar? <laughs> Comma, C57, which is chapter 57. This time is section one. So we went back again to that, um, chapter yeah, chapter 15, where is my chapter? Wait a minute. No, not that one. Wait guys, hold on, it's around here somewhere. I got so much goodies, I wanted to share everything with you guys. Yeehaw. I'm going to share everything. <laughs> okay, it's around here somewhere. Wait, 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 wait. But anyway, in the, the one I told you guys about the 1-1, one, it was on in um, Section 5. The judiciary is in Section 1 of the same place. In that, I got to find out because I need to show you guys. Okay, wait, wait. Important. Oh, it's familiar. Whoops. <laughs> okay, boss. <well>, yeah. <laughs> you don't upset it, but put it back this time. Okay, the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because that chapter 57 
that I had showed you folks where the 1-1 comes from. The one I just read to you, that um, 601-1, it's telling you that every court is operated under the kingdom law. That's what I'm trying to find the chapter 57 that I showed you guys earlier. You, you understand what I just said? So the 1-1 one -one talks about um, uh, their source of authority shows it was L1892, which is the session laws of the Hawaiian kingdom of 1892, C57 chapter 57, S5 section 5. We're going to talk about the judiciary because that's what the HRS is saying, how the judiciary is operating. Their source of authority is the same act under Chapter 57, L1892, Session Laws of the Kingdom of 1892. Only thing is, yeah, no, that's the case. Only thing is in Section 1. So what are they saying? Every court is operated under kingdom law. How's that? Okay, so like I said, we're going to lay everything out for you folks, take as much pictures as you guys want, okay? So, you see what I mean? That don't listen to other people and say, oh no, they're not following kingdom law. Oh yeah, they are. But if you look outside for your answers, and you're not looking right in your own backyard, you're not going to find them. And that's what we tend to do. You think, okay, oh, they are the big guys, they are the big laws. You know, we got United Nations, we got Congress, we got, you know, ICC courts, we got World Court. Who cares? And I'm going to tell you why, who cares? And the reason, where? Oh, okay. Chapter 56. <laughs> so wait, this is chapter 5. I mean, not chapter 5, section 5. Section 1. The judiciary of the entire courts in the wine kingdom is based on kingdom law. Okay, guys? That's what, thank you for finding me. <laughs> but anyway, okay. The reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is because all of our answers, I mean, all of our answers is right here. We don't have to move any place and look outside. And I'll tell you why we're not recognized. Because they know, if we don't know even who we are, how can anybody recognize us? We need to recognize who we are here, where we are, what laws we have. Our laws give us the identity and the power of our government. And the beautiful thing is the state of Hawaii, the city, county, the federal, all know it. They don't want us to know it. Yep. It's so simple that we're looking way outside over there. Oh, okay, we got to travel thousands of miles to get to the United Nations. And guess what happened? You know how many times this man goes to the United Nations? He's been going like almost 40 years. And he still have non-stop going. I'm not going against all the things that they do. But I'm saying until we realize what our true identity is, yep. we're going to figure out what we really own under what law. If the state of Hawaii is using our law as a source of authority, what does that mean? What does that mean? The kingdom is still here. The kingdom is still here. So when people say the kingdom is still here, that's just, it's like a nickname. Oh, the kingdom is still here. Okay, and, well, that's what I heard. <laughs> right, act like it. That's exactly walk like it, be like it. It is ours. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now, um, in 2000, you know what, I got my magazine in there. Okay, so, in 2006, uh, Klein Namu'o, you remember he was the CEO, I think before Kam Kamanao, yeah? yeah? For OHA, okay? So in 2006, he comes to our office. Our office was at 210 Iolani Avenue, going up by Queen Emma, and um, everything was under the White Kingdom. Everything was under the one kingdom. Electric, water, you name it. Okay, they, everything was put under them. So anyway, he came. Four hours he sat with me. Okay, and he had a couple of people with him. And we did the whole presentation. He goes, so Maya, so how do you guys pay? How much do you guys pay? I said, about 2500 a month. So how do you guys pay? I go, right here. And I put it into my pocket and he thought I was nothing. He goes, no, really? What's your 501c3? I go, what is that? I go, we're not, I said, we're not U.S. citizens. You gotta be a U.S. citizen to get a 501c3. No, <laughs> because if we accept that, then we accept that it's a federal entity. We now federalize. I said, that's not gonna happen. All 501c3s is not the state, it's federal, and it makes you another federal entity. That's how they can tell you, you and U.S. citizen. Under, so everybody who's under the 501c3, you guys are U.S. citizens. And that's how they can pay you and do the things that you do. But they do that in type to entice you, says, oh yeah, you can get free money and da 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 da. But who are you labeled as? That's the disconnection they want from you. 
okay by being a part of that. So I said, no, we don't have none of that. Like, well, yeah, I want to help you. And then I said, okay, we got aha coming up. And you know, and he said, how much you think of me? I said, I don't know, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars or whatever. And we had no plans of asking him, not knowing what's coming from him. He said, Maya, let me know, give me the amount, and then you come down to my office. And then I said, I, I, I'm not no 501c3, I'm not gonna get any 501c3, I ain't gonna open no business, no. <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, don't worry, Maya. He goes, because on my signature alone, he goes, I can give you up to 25 grand. Well, we never need that much. So anyway, after we figured out everything that we're going to have to put on the palace and whatever, it came up to $10,000. So we went, and he said, you know anybody who has a 501c3? I said, like, yeah, I backed door, and he goes, no worry, my hand, don't worry. Okay, so anyway, please, so, so anyway, um, I knew somebody, <laughs> and that somebody went ahead, and um, they knew who he was, and they go, good, because it's somebody that, um, that, they know that uses OHA funds a lot, grants for educational purposes. So anyway, I went ahead and asked him, he said, yeah, in maybe about a month, month and a half later, we got that. People wait a long time, but not us. So anyway, um, when we got the check, and I'm going to show you proof, uh, here is OHA, and this is signed by Clyde Nomo'o, congratulating us, and this is from Keone Agard, who he gave us Keolopono indigenous something, his 501c3. And then this is, um, let me see, Dante Carpenter. Hmm. And he's writing to my uh, chief of staff, His Excellency Io Kepa, recognizing us in that capacity. And then here's the check for $10,000 from Oha. And here's the contract that says that Kealapono is the da 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 but the recipient of these funds is to the Hawaiian Kingdom government. This is the contract, mm -hmm. okay? So me, I wanna make sure I get this, this, and this, and this so that people know that that's what happened. Well, has something happened in the rotunda at the Capitol after that, and, I, and in nothing to do with all of us, when I brought this thing up, they, all the trustees looked at me, and then they looked at Clyde, and he just sat there, and then and they were saying, you gay. He goes, I can sign up to 25, she only needed 10. <laughs> but before this, Kanai Aupuni, what do you call it? The thing, the, the thing Aupuni, Kanai Aupuni. This, they were recognized contractually. Hawaiian King of Government, they gave money. I want to tell you that. Okay? And then not long after that, I had this whole story in the magazine and got Keanu and get um, all the different Leon is in there. And then they make my picture, full size. <laughs> Why? I don't know. And then after that, um, the legislative body went ahead and recognized not only myself, but my officers also in there. Even to today, when we go into court, you know, I hate when they say, Your Honor, we don't recognize the One Kingdom. And if they only know 1-1 one -one takes you right to the Legislative Act that Queen Liliopalani, I forgot to tell you, you know that 1892? She signs that. So they still recognize her, and if they recognize the Queen, that means what? The kingdom is still here. And that is the documents that you guys get to see and take pictures and whatever else. Okay, so you guys know that that's proof because for me, I kind of just stop and let's show you these things. Okay, now, okay, so let's get to some gravy stuff over here. Okay, so you guys like take a break or anything? You guys all good? Okay, very good. You know, you're talking about the 501c3. Okay. Is it that the federal trust? Uh, the what? IRS. Yeah. It's an IRS. Right. Yeah. It's, it is a, yes, it's, it's a, a federal, federal entity. Okay, and that is right. 87% of all the land ownership that people believe they own in the islands is all in the trust. All of it, over 87%. How's that? Okay. Now, because we're going to bring up the trust, I want to just say this. I don't, um, I don't favor anything that they want to give you for free. You know, like, oh, go sign this up and get a 501c3, you get free money, you get free this. No, that's how they buy us, that's how they entice us. And even if we got good intentions, they're getting you in, in a trap. Because yeah. most of our Hawaiian, um, you know, our Hawaiians, they you know, get the 501c3 because the intention is to help the people, whether it's on the land or schooling. And I see the intentions, but their intentions are not the same. So they keep 
elected as a U.S. citizen, and that's a wrong thing to be. Because, and I say thing because a U.S. citizen is not a human being. A U.S. citizen is a franchise. You know, like how McDonald's, you live by McDonald's, it's a franchise. That's what a U.S. citizen is. It is a franchise. It is a thing. It is not a living person. Okay? Property. Property, chattel, whatever. <laughs> anyway, all those good stuff. Could I? Well, uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Right ahead. All right. Um, uh, one of the things that you said really early, and that was uh, where where is the uh, Paul Paula that said that we were naturalized? Actually, you know, as as U.S. citizens or whatever, um, there there actually doesn't have to be because there are many many things that we've signed that we voluntarily identified ourselves as U.S. citizens um, over the years, and so so we don't necessarily have to uh, have made a specific. Uh, naturalization uh, effective uh, because we throughout our lives we signed up and we, we identified ourselves yes I'm that person you know and I want to get this loan because and I will do this and and this is my social security number and things like that all of those things are adhesions right to to that corporation which we have to break we have to make sure that's all clean up one, at one point well, I wanted to also uh, talk a little bit about the uh, United Nations and, and what I'm doing there, what most of us are, are trying to do there. And um, there's a lot of misconceptions about the United Nations. We see the United Nations as a, how would you say, um, a necessary evil, so to speak. Um, not all the people there are evil, but it really is a country club. It's, it's a club made out of countries to serve themselves and it's to protect themselves. The United States is one of the biggest ones in that, but so is Russia and China and all the other countries. Everybody's there for their own self-interest. And most of it is to defend themselves from being overrun or being um, misused by others. But still all of this kind of exploitation goes on and the United Nations is part of that because they do a lot of things that, that are detrimental to people and detrimental to, to uh, uh, to the environment and things like that. Even though they have all these programs that say we're for human rights and all that kind of stuff. What are we trying to do there? We're not trying to join the United Nations. That's the farthest from our minds because that this is not what we do. We're not trying to get the United Nations to recognize us or something like that because that we don't even want that. What we're trying to do is get the United Nations to tell one of its big boys, the United States, it is breaking its charter with the United Nations. It's breaking its promises it made to the United Nations and how it treats us. And so that's all we're doing. We're just trying to get the United Nations to pay attention, to reign in the United States to the point where we can breathe and we can, and, and we can, we can then uh, assert ourselves. So Mahilani is totally right. We are all of this. We are here. We are the, the country. We are here. We just have to act like it. We have to, and that this is what will help to trigger the other countries of the United Nations to bring the United States into check. Because if they see that we are asserting ourselves, that we are serious about this, that we have actually reclaimed who we are, not reclaimed, we've actually reactivated who we are. And we start doing these things together, and we start showing up on the map, we start raising our profile, they will see that and they will rally to our side, not so much to support us, but basically to bring the United States and take them out of the picture. You know, to hold the United States back from, from uh, overreacting to us. So this is what we're doing there, and, and we're, we're making really good progress. It takes a lot of years, it takes a lot of time, because diplomacy is slow. Lawsuits are fast, but they're also, they, they can be over and they can go, go against you. You know, uh, you can bring up a lawsuit, and in this, this world and in this uh, situation, we'll lose all those lawsuits, because we don't have the clout to really push them. But we can use diplomacy and make friends. Lawsuits actually makes adversaries. You know, I was just reading um, recently uh, Keanu's uh, protest and demand uh, at the United Nations, and he names 173 countries that have successor treaties with the Hawaiian Kingdom, and he's absolutely right. 
they all have a responsibility to uphold the treaties that they had made with their colonial powers when they were colonies. Every one of them. But what is he telling them to do? He's telling them to, to he's demanding that they recognize the Hawaiian Kingdom. And that's, on most of the countries, that's suicide, you know. But, and what I'm trying to do is make friends with them. Saying, you know, hey, we're here, we're coming along, uh, and you're going to see in a little while more of us, but get yourselves ready because we're going to help. You're going to be able to kokua us in a way that's not threatening to yourself. You know, and that's what we're setting that up right now. So we're getting really close to, uh, to doing that. But it takes time and, it, and it's all under the surface. I was, I was asked today by somebody, it said, shouldn't we publicize what we're trying to do? I said, no, that's the last thing we want to do. We, won't want, we don't want to telegraph, even though the U.S. does see us coming, we don't want to telegraph to the world and make this a whole big thing so that they will have to defend themselves, so they will have to squelch our movement. So, so everything has to happen in a very uh, circumspect way, but in a very respectful way, like you were saying. You know, we're respecting all the countries and we're saying we don't want to put you in danger or ask you to be put in danger. Because this is, this is not good. It's not, it's not good friend, making good friends. So um, as a result, we have, uh, like I, I mentioned before, um, and whereas years before we used to go there and people would say, oh, that's, that's an interesting story. Yeah, you have every right to do what you, to bring your country back, etc. But now they're saying, uh, and they're, they're saying it back then, and good luck with it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? And, but now they're saying, uh, how do you think we can help you? You know, and so there you need to think in terms of, okay, this might be something we can get on board. Okay, and again, we're not trying to join the UN. We're not trying to um, bring a movement against the United States or anything like that. We're simply asserting who we are and that there will come a time that they can assist us by asserting who we are. Yeah, okay. Mahalo. Yeah. You know, um, I just want to say this. I so uh, admire and respect Leon um, for four decades that he has put himself in the limelight. And he's, a, uh, he's truly aloha. You don't see him angry, yelling, swearing, cussing. He doesn't do stuff like that, but he surely has been able to connect with many people from across the world. So he has a lot of allies in the different nations and I truly understand, you know, um, where he's coming from. So thank you so much, Leon. <clears throat> um, okay, so, I got all okay, kinds chocolate candy here, Tootsie Roll. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to show you the, the case that we won. Um, and so that you know, it was here. And it was on um, March 13, 2012, and we filed and we answered because they arrested us in the Yolani Palace because they said we were criminally trespassing. So here's my question, and Bill, I love you know you guys from this area. <laughs> so I told him uh, because he wanted us to leave the palace after about five years of being in, and just for that day I said why? And he goes, you know, APEC is here. I go and. And he goes, and they want to visit the palace. I said, well, we are the hosts, of course. Yeah, sure, we want to meet them. We want to check out their credentials and everything before we let anybody in. He goes, oh, no, we're going to do it. So we have to have you leave. We're not going to go. And so after about two, three hours of trying to struggle with us, all I told him, we will graciously leave, show us the title to the land. And he goes, oh, my God, no go there. I said, no, I'm going to go there, Bill. I said, show me your title to the Iolani Palace. And then he goes, and he got like 50. In, yeah, about 15 attorney generals, they're all there on the Yolani Palace and they're all huddling and talking. He goes, okay, my ass, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to let you guys go, we're not going to rush you or anything because there's 200 people in the palace for 22 of us, okay? <laughs> and, I, and then uh, he said, so, that's the first thing. I said, okay, so I'm going to talk to the other Nuhuni one and they said, no, we're going to stand. I said, okay, we're not going to no place. Then he comes back again and he goes, okay, so my ass, he said, we're going to arrest you guys, but then only going to cost you $25 to bail out. I said, we're still not leaving. I said, Bill, show me the titles that you have for this place. And he goes, I'm not going to go there. I said, I'm going to go there. To make a long story short, after three hours, they went ahead and they put the plastic, you know, the rubbish can bag thing, you poop, 
So they put that on us, and then we went to um, on um, Ala Moana and Cook Street. Yeah. Ala Moana and Cook. There's a holding cell. They didn't have a court order. They didn't have a warrant. And the chief enforcement for the attorney general said, "What the <laughs> hell are you guys in there? We don't have nothing or whatever." After being there for three hours, they took us 2:30 in the morning. We're at the attorney general's office behind of the old ID, <laughs> Kiku in the old building, and they're getting an order. After we've been there for a couple hours in the holding cell, this is how bad it was, okay? But anyway, this is the paperwork uh, that we did. So, you know, this is the dismissal at that time because now I only talk vacate. And you see this envelope that's in here is in my name because um, a week after I went to court, the deputy attorney general, his name was Vince Kanemoto, nice Japanese guy, and he said, "Maya, go to the governor's office and we'll get an expungement. And I go, what? Why? And then he goes like this, and he said, because they're going to take away your case and everything else and, you know, whatever pictures they took and, and, and fingerprints is going to be gone. Three years later, he sees me again. I finally did it, all of us. Took like 120 days, four months, but it did come in. And so for me, uh, when they did this, um, they took the whole case. They gagged the whole case. So we gave people copies of this to go ahead and go get your own copy so you folks can see. They didn't have it. When they went to talk to the clerk over there, they go, what case? This is right here. So I went myself, I took my, my ID, and which is my kingdom ID, and I said, this is who I am, what happened? Where is it? Because all the people wanted to make copies. They didn't have it, they gagged the case. Because if we set precedence for what happened on the palace, because we brought the titles, we bought, there was, um, I think it was two royal patents, one land commission award, and two grants. And so those were the ownership of the papers under the Hawaiian Kingdom, those Hawaiian Kingdom titles. So when we brought that in, then I questioned them, show me your title. Because you're arresting us for criminal trespassing. That means you're saying we don't have the title to be on the grounds. We're there five years and only now you, you're telling us we're going to get up. So they never ever did, sh did share that. So when we won at the end, I told the judge, because of their false arrest, you need to make sure they, sh they prove that they had the title to take us into court in the first place. And he did that, he hit the gavel. 2012 to today, they still never showed it. To today. They still didn't show they have title because the state don't have title any place because everything is in the Makai Nana because the Kohanahiki are no longer here. So we as Makai Nana have an undivided interest in the whole land. But that in which a claim is being made is the only thing for you. Everything that's outside is something we gotta malama ourselves. Because this is the country's obligation to have that. And it doesn't matter whether you get 1% or 50% or 100%, it doesn't matter. It matters that there is no quantum involved in the kingdom, there never was. That's why I am so against the Hawaiian homes because of the fact, I mean, I'm 75% Hawaiian, my kids got all Hawaiian, they don't need to worry. But that's not fair to the majority of our people who doesn't have 50%. It's just not fair, you know, and they have to go, Congress over there, drop this to 25% and then another, one thirty second. That is shameful that, you know, we have to go through all of these different things. But anyway, that's to show you folks that we did go to court and we did win. Um, oh, yeah, here's a good one. And because Charlie brought up about the, the trust. Okay, so, you guys heard of the Admission Act? Huh? You guys don't know what the Admission Act is? The Admission Act is when this became the state of Hawaii on August 21st, 1959. Yeah. You guys now remember? Yeah. And that's called the Admission Act. Okay, so this came from the website of the state of Hawaii again, just like the chapter 57, just like the 1-1, um, the all that is from, you know, the state capital right there on Maritime Street. Well, something very interesting, okay, so this is what it says. It says that, oh, you got to love this, because you're going to see something <laughs> that you never saw. Maybe some of you may know, I don't know if Leon knows, but anyway, I'm going to bust it. Okay, so this is called the Admission Act. And right in the middle, this is what it says. It says, the Admission Act is a federal public trust. What? <laughs> Did you guys get that? Let me say that again. The Admission Act that created the state of Hawaii government, it says the Admission Act is a federal public trust. So is there a government? No. There's a trust. So five years ago, I go in to see the senator. You guys probably all know him since you're Kanaka. <laughs> and I went in his office and I told him, you know what? 
you know that all you guys sitting in the legislative body, you're not no senators, you're not no House of Representatives. He goes, what do you mean, Mahia? I said, don't act. I said, you guys are all trustees under the trust. And he was brick with Galatera. He goes, Mahia, you can't go out there and start telling all that. And you all know how you, like, I really care. Don't go out there and start saying that you're a senator, you a, you know, House of Representative when you are a trustees. So you notice I read they're a federal public trust, right? This is coming off of their own website. The reason why I brought that up is because the state of Hawaii could not have been created unless they did one thing and they had to. You know what they had to do? They had to accept the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act or there could be no state of Hawaii. That is the reason why the state of Hawaii is a trust. The legislative body are the trustees for the trust. It's everywhere. If you look really good, it is. Look at the Mission Act first. So why do they call it a federal public trust? Because the Congress created the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. And I asked several people in different high places and they know and they just keep quiet. So I said, so you're telling me the state of Hawaii is a, it is a public trust doctrine. And do you know because of this statehood, you guys know about that yellow French flag and I'm not trying to go get oh, carried yeah. away? That yellow French flag was put there because of a proclamation and an executive order that Dwight D. Eisenhower did at the time of him passing the state of Hawaii. And that executive order is 10834. That executive order had every single of the other 49 states put the yellow French flag in all their courts and in all their legislative places. Why? Because now they can use the law of the sea which is admiralty law because that's the law they needed to come over here because we're like 2,500 miles away. These things I'm telling you is all congressional. There's many other reports on this in the federal government. There's many, um, um, oh, how would I say this, um, deliberations. And in reading this, that's when I really found out about the admiralty law. And we actually did some pala pala and we actually won with the things that I created maybe about, I say about maybe seven years ago when I put that together. But the reason why the state of Hawaii, because they have to recognize the people. But the people they recognize is called the Native Hawaiians. When the U.S. say Native anything, they mean we as Indians. Okay, everybody got that? They mean we're Indians. So when they say the Native Hawaiians are the beneficiary, no, they're talking to you as an Indian. Okay, and all the homelands is all reservations. That's what it is because it was accepted under the Bureau of Indian Affairs Act. Even OHA, and I got that documentation also that OHA was accepted and created under the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Congress. So what does that mean when they did that? So they can get plenary power. That means congressional power to tell you what you can and cannot do. So unless we know our true identity once again, you're going to always think you're somebody else that you're really not. You can no way be a United States citizen. You can be a, if you're from California, you're a Californian. If you're from Florida, you're a Floridian. Because each of these are countries. Florida is a country. They got their own flag like us. They got their own anthem like us. They got their own seal like us. Because they're sovereign countries. So when they became the United States Congress, they were independent countries as republics of Florida, Mississippi, and all of them. So before, when you would ask them, where are you from? Oh, what's your nationality? Oh, I'm a Floridian. I'm a Californian. Because they're talking about their identity for their country. So the United States needed to get their hands in all the different states. So what did they do? They created the states up, which is a corporate side of that. So the United States, um, the United States government, um, they really couldn't create a citizenship for the United, the corporate United States or the federal United States. And all these things, you can actually go online. Online, there are a lot of good things that you can look at. Look at a lot of congressional things that's going on out there. But just so that you know, why do you think they call us Hawaiians? They want you to think that that's your race. No, it's not. It's never happened. It's a political identity. And every time they, they call you a Hawaiian, they're recognizing your true political identity for this country. We are the government. I'm going to read you something. This is going to totally blow away. I need you to hear this really good, okay? Because this one is two um, certified documents from the archives again. And I thank God for all of these things that happened, okay? Um, everybody heard of the 
Mahele, the great Mahele, 1848? Uh, Kidoki. You're going to read it as what he intentionally meant it to be because everybody thinks it's Oya. One third king, one third Konakiki, one third Makaainana. Aloha. No, that never happened. This is the legislative act signed by the legislature. I'm sorry, the legislature and the king. Okay, and when you come and you want to take pictures, please do because then you can take this to get your own, you know, from the archives, okay? And so, um, anyway, this is with the king, Kamehameha III, with his premier, or just like a Kuhina Nui at that time, and um, the House of Nobles and the representatives. So that makes up the body that's going to pass laws, okay? And in here, He's going to, um, what do you call it, in 1848, this is what's going to happen. It says that um, uh, the act relating to the lands of His Majesty, hold on, let me see if this is the one. Hold on, 18, no, not this one, this one. Because if you don't know your laws, you're not going to know anything. You need to know this, and this is really the basics of where our lands are coming from, okay? Okay, so this is what it says. It's an act relating to the lands of His Majesty, the King, and of the government. And this was approved, signed by the King and the legislative body in the Kingdom, June 7, 1848. And it says, whereas it hath pleased His Most Gracious Majesty, Commitment III, the King, after reserving certain lands to himself as his own, wait, as his own private property, you notice the word is private. Public is when the government is involved. Private is your own. Okay, so he's saying as his own private property. To surrender and forever make, oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh, wait, wait. The king, okay, wait, let me start again. Whereas it had pleased his most gracious majesty, Commandment the third, the king, after reserving certain lands to himself as his own private property, to surrender and forever make over unto his chiefs and people the greater portion of his royal domain. Okay, now, this, this, I want you to see this picture. Okay, so this is 1848. He's going to call the 245 chiefs, Konoiki, whatever they may be, and the king because they're going to surrender their land. Remember I brought that up earlier? So they're all going to surrender the land. But in order for them to get the title, at least with the Land Commission Award, they're going to go have to make their claim, all right? Okay, so what he's saying is that all the Konohikis didn't have the gold or silver. So what did they give up for the commutation? They gave up land because it's equivalent because gold and silver come from land. So they were able to exchange their land, land in full payment, which is called commutation. The commutation was one-third unimproved value of the land. Once they did that, their taxes was paid. Okay, everybody got that? So this is what he's talking about. All the lands that was given to him, after the chiefs did what they did, all of that is not a king. He kept a small portion to himself and he gave almost two thirds away of his land to the chiefs, the people. So he continues to give the ali'i, he continues to give to the ali'i and the ma'ainana because the chiefs and the people is ali'i konahiki and ma'ainana. He says it right in here, okay? Let me continue. Then he says, And whereas it had pleased our sovereign lord, the king, to place the land so made over to his chiefs and people in the keeping of the house of nobles and... Wait, wait. House of nobles and representatives. The house of representatives. Or such person or persons as they may from time to time appoint to be disposed of in uh, wait, wait, to be disposed of. Okay, so what 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 I'm trying to read is that the, the king had transferred the greater portion of his domain to the chiefs and the people. So he's putting it under, on behalf of the people, he's letting the legislative body take control to dispose of the lands for them, to them, okay? That's what he's trying to say here. And so what they had done is that they appointed the Minister of Interior to take over all that lands that he gave up to them, only the Minister of Interior is in charge. Not the banks, not the title company, not the real estate company. In this legislative act, 
like how they recognize 1-1, that's a legislative act. This is another legislative act that they're saying only the Minister of Interior. Okay, so it's in here. So now he's going to go. He's going to go to this place. He said, be it enacted by the House of Nobles and representatives of the Hawaiian Islands in Legislative Council Assembly that affixing um, our deepest thanks to His Majesty, I'm sorry, it's not affixing, um, it's another word, express, expressing, I think that's what it is, that expressing our deepest thanks to, the, uh, to His Majesty for the noble and truly royal gift we do hereby solemn, solemnly confirm his great act of our good king and declare the following name lands. Okay, so now, they're going to name the lands. I'll show you the lands. So this is called... This is called the Indices Book. Okay? And this I got from somebody very special to me. And I got this over 10 years ago and this is from A'o. Anybody, anybody know A'o? A'o? Okay. We know A'o. Okay, so A'o. Hakuku, and she gave me this book. In this book, there is every single royal patent and land commission one in this book, all in here. Every single island, every single land is in here. They, you can. There's different category. You can look if you don't know the numbers. You can look by name. You can look by island. You can look by district locations, or by the um, the land commission award number or the royal patent number. Anywhere you can find it in here on every single island in every single district. It's in this book. Now watch this. Because the territory of Hawaii went ahead and compiled it because it's actually in four books. So the territory is recognizing all the titles of the kingdom land. She used this, um, uh, what's your name, when, to validate that the territory and the state recognize the land. That's why it was passed. You remember when the city council, like I said, had, um, what do you call, approved of the Kuleana Act of 1850? Because she could prove this. Because they made this book, the territory which became the state of Hawaii. So if you like look for any land, any name, whatever, you can find it in here. But getting back to what I'm reading, in this act, they point to the crown lands. They list all the crown lands in here. Okay, uh, let me see, right here. So it says crown lands, but like I said, before 1865, the king called it king's land. It was after his death because he died on December 15, 1954. Not eight, I mean, 1854, thank you. In 1865, they had the ruling in court, and then they changed it to crown lands. Okay, so, just so you know, but they did that deliberately. But it's still private. But it's still private, thank you. So you get all the crown lands, and this is, I want you to hear, what he said after this, after the end of the last crown land. To be the private lands of His Majesty Commandment III, to have and to hold to himself, his heirs and successors forever, not to tomorrow, forever. And said land shall be regulated and disposed of according to his royal will and pleasure, subject only to the rights of tenants. Now, because I read it in English, because it's written in English, they're talking about the Maka'ai Na Na. So when it says it's subject only to them, that's why the Maka'ai Na Na was able to make claims in Ha'ula, which is crown land, in Wai'ana, in Nanakuli, because they're crown lands, because they could, because he said so, okay? Even if he gave two-thirds of his land away, because remember he said he kept the smaller portion and gave, and gave the larger domain to them, he still said that the Makainanas can, the Konehikis could not claim in Crown land. Only the Makainana. Okay, so now we're going to just finish the end of that, because I'm going to show you this page. And then he's going to say, um, and then he's going to say, that, and be it further enacted, that we do hereby in the name of the chiefs and people of the Hawaiian Islands, except of the following land. Let me read that again. This is the legislative body speaking, and they're saying, and be it further enacted that we do hereby in the name of the chiefs and people. So who does, who is holding our lands? The legislative body. Who are they holding it for? For the chiefs and the people, which is the Konehiki and the Maka'ainana. So who does not own this in this? The legislative body doesn't own it. They themselves are saying they're holding it on our behalf. The lands are ours. That's what they're saying in here, okay? Now they're going to point to their lands.
the lands of the chiefs and the people. So it's a couple pages of crown lands over here, and in fact, let me go look for Oahu so I can show you what I want to show you. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, uh, Waianae. Waianae is over here. Okay, so that you guys know. And then where is Nanakuli? Nanakuli. Oh, in fact, that's something to talk about. That, yeah, that's a whole different story. It's not listed as Nanakuli. Yeah, in fact, Nanakuli. Yeah, yeah, in fact, Nanakuli is not listed in here in Lua Lua Le, and I'll tell you why, because at the time this is happening, Nanakuli and Lua Lua Le should have been the place where the Hawaiians was already making claims. But because of all the powers to be, they kept that land outside, and so you will not find Nanakuli, Lua Lua Le, and all your other Ahupua'a in this area, in this book. Because the white man has actually kept it from claim of our people. And we know because we get all of them making thousand acres claiming all over here in their name because they kept it away from the government. Because they had a lot of, you know, not just Kanaka, but they had Caucasian, more Caucasians in there than anything. And they were kind of clicking with the outside and the political bodies that was in the inside. But anyway, these are all the government lands. And this is page upon page upon page that the king gave to the chiefs and people. Lowly over here. So in this book, in the um, Bureau of Commands, you're going to be able to find this. Anybody can look at it, you just kind of take it. But anyway, you can look at this book inside there, and you can skim through this book if you so want to. It's like 1,185 pages, but it's like they got four snapshots on one page. Kind of like that. So if you divide that by four, you figure out how many pages that would be. But anyway, um, okay, so this is what the 1848 Legislative Act had passed. So if you're going to pass 1-1, yeah, 1892 chapter 57, you're going to have to accept all the laws in the kingdom. And when I say that, it's because of the fact that there is no other free lands out there. You have the king, you have the konihiki, you have the makainana. In the kingdom law, it will tell you the government lands they speak of today was not something separate. It belonged with the king. The king and the government was the same. So his share was that share of king and government. But today they tell you the king and the government and then the Korihiki. So now they're leaving out the Maka and Na'ana, okay? Now something very interesting, because while I was working on Ha'ula and the Pala Pala and going down there, this is what I realized. When the territory of Hawaii took in, I mean came in in the 1900s, what happened is that they were saying, okay, we got all these crown lands because the Republic of Hawaii gave us that. But if you read it really good, the Republic of Hawaii, which had no authority, what they were conveying to the United States was any and all other public lands. They were talking about public lands. Royal patents, land commissioner was, crown lands, private lands. All private lands. Konohiki, so the Konohiki made their first, um, their first claim, and then the king had everything else. He kept a portion, then he gave the rest to the chiefs and the people. What's left? What's left? No, not to left. There is no public land. You guys hearing what I'm saying? You, it's, you just gotta see this and you gotta read the legislative act and it's like, oh, there's nothing left. There is no such thing. But you know what these guys, these, these crooks did when the territory came in. First of all, the Republic of was stealing all the lands. They was taking up all the lands and everything else. Then when they came in and they said, Crown lands belongs to the territory. You know what they did? All the LCA, the Land Commission Award lands that um, the Makainana was claiming all over in the Crown lands, they took away all that lands and they said that's Crown lands because they were living on Crown lands. But they didn't know that the Legislative Act was passed that allowed them to claim in there. Because who gave them the Land Commission Award? Who gave them one royal patent? It was the government because they had to follow the legislative law. And that's what I realized. The whole islands is what they did. They took all that LCA lands that the Makainana was living on and they added that to the crown lands and that's why they're all over the place. They're not supposed to have done that. If you go to Lai or Lai is a big laugh, you know that the Mormon church is there, right? You know, it's like they have their own little nation. They charge water over there and everybody got to pay water, um, water to that place. They don't pay to the border water supply and if you call the border water supply, this is what they say. Oh no, um, they collect. They're their own nation. How's that? Okay? Now, Chokcho, 
Land Commission award over there. And so when I went in, I stepped in, I talked to the board of what they call HRI. They pretty much handle all of that because that's William Charles Dunalino land, the whole Lai'i. And it's on the LCA 8599B. So right on there, I was going through the whole thing with them, and then I said, what do you have? Where's your title? And he said, oh, we got this in 1861 from uh, William Charles Dunalino. I said, there's no way you could get that. I said, because he was a king in 1874. You mean 13 years ago he gave it to you? There's no way. Yes, he did. I said, there's no way. And he goes, why? I said, because no no royal patents and no land commission work can ever be sold. Ever. It's important we all understand that. If we just look at LCA and think that's just a title, it's more than that. It cannot be sold. you got to have the blood to have the right to the land. If you don't have the blood, you cannot partake of the land. So imagine everybody that's on here and they're paying mortgages, which our people should not even supposed to be paying, but they're paying mortgages on land they'll never own. So you see, and all these things is, is, it can be, the repercussion of this is so big and so broad that you got to know who you are, right? So you can figure out what land you still own and the laws that apply to that. So it's you, the law, and the land. That's all you need to know because everything else connects to you and how we know because the state of Hawaii recognizes all our laws. So if anybody ever tells you they're not recognizing, oh yeah, they are. We go into court because we use kingdom law. And you know what we do when Kaipo goes into court? You know how he went? On, in, on Alakea Street, the Alakea Courthouse, <laughs> that block right up there, it has 11 Royal Patents, Land Commission Award, grants and all that. He pulls all the certified copy of all of that. He files the paper and he tells him, because you need two jurisdictions. You need personum, that means over your body. And then you need, um, um, uh, what do you call subject. that? Subject matter jurisdiction. Subject matter is you need to have the geologic, I mean, geographical location. So we got them with the what? We got them with the titles right to the land so they don't have subject matter jurisdiction because it's about the location. And they cannot have on him because the only way he can attach to the title to the land is because he's a makainana. And so when they see him, they already know what he's going to do. And he's already going out the door. I mean, it's like, why are you bringing these people in the courtroom? Because we were like, oh, how are you? How's your day? <laughs> this is us when we go to court. We're very alone. <laughs> but in the end, when we go out, you know, we don't smile because they know and they're not going to deal with us. Because if you're going to take us there, we're going to take you there. You want to go far? You want to go long? We're going to far along with you. Because every time we're going to talk to you, we're going to bring up more HRS, more HRS that you violating. Now you have a right to go ahead and you can actually remove them from office if you find them to be incompetent. If I got to tell you your laws and you're incompetent, that's how you remove anything, anybody, the governor, the mayor, the legislative, because they don't know the law. And that's all, it's so simple to do stuff like that. Um, okay, the last thing I'm going to show you folks, okay. Um, actually, there was another act, and I'm going to just summarize real quick. In here, this is about a year later, after 1848, between 1849 and 1850. Why is this important? Because in here, the king said, oh, I, I thought the lands were supposed to come back to me when I gave it up. Remember he gave the larger portion of his domain, which is about two-thirds? The king is now talking about a year or so later, and he said, Oh no, I thought it came back to me. And so his um, Kohina Nui and uh, the House of Nui said, No, his, you know, his royal majesty, that's not what happened. So they went explaining, and he goes, Oh, okay. And so Gary P. Judd is going to step in and he's going to say, the reason why we had to do what we do is because in the future, the foreigners may think they have an interest in the land. They're speaking about this in 1849, guys. They already would predict what would happen in the future if they didn't secure the titles to the law to the people. And that's why this is to me is, these two documents is one of the most, to me, the most important document because it's the basis of how the land is going to get into the hands of the Maka'ainana, okay? So this is an 1848 one, and this is uh, 18, they say between 1841 and 1850, but obviously it had to be 1849 or 1850 because of the fact that they're referencing to the 1848, okay? So let me put that there. Okay, hold on. Yeah. I talked to you guys about it's a federal public trust, right? Okay. And what you guys need to know, because the state of Hawaii is a federal public trust, everything is federalized from the courts to everything they do is all federal. There is no state, nothing. Because the trust is a federal public trust. So if the state of Hawaii is a federal public trust, where is the state? I'm saying, where is the government? 
that's a trust where the government, oh, we're right here. And one more thing, this is, I, I, I don't want to forget that. I got to bring this out right now. Let me show you this one. This is the killer. One more part of it. Huh? Who okay. are the beneficiaries? Okay. So, so if you have a trust, you have to have beneficiaries. Okay, wait, wait. I, I, will, I will get to this right now. And thank you for raising that, okay? Okay. Wait. The beneficiaries can fire the trust. You know, there's another thing that Keanu Cyrus saying to us one time at his meetings. He, although the title belongs to the state, that's exactly what he said, came out of his word. We were at that meeting at the Yolani Palace. Remember? One night he came out and said that. That was like October, right? Yeah. Recently. Yeah. Okay. But when Kamokukaku won his case in court, he had a pang come out and give the definition of it. So what Keanu is saying and what went to court, the definition is two totally different words. Because <laughs> they're preaching that in, in a university. Yeah. Exactly. It's false, yeah. it's false doctrine. It's false doctrine. He's doing yeah. that purposely because he was convicted before. <laughs> no, they're not preaching it at the university because Umi, Umi Perkins also teaches at the university and he teaches a different definition of a loading. Okay, so let me just say this, and um, and I need to share this. Okay, so if he was talking about the royal patents, and we the only one in the world call our patents royal patents, because it's really land patents. These land patents were given by the president himself in the United States way back from the 17, 1800. In 1848, they had this treaty called the Treaty of um, Hidalgo, Guadalupe Hidalgo. That's when they paid $15 million in gold, real gold, um, United States to Mexico, and they got they got um, Utah, they got Nevada, they got California, Arizona, and what was the last one? One more. I forgot what was the last one. I know it's going to come after. This is the five they bought. When they bought that by treaty, the whole United States is bought by treaty. You heard of the Louisiana pur Purchase? They bought the land with gold. That's the reason why in the kingdom, why we own everything is because all our predecessors paid with gold. When they didn't have gold, they paid their land. The land is equivalent of gold. That's why this money, well, this note, this paper they gave us is not backed by gold and silver. That's why nobody paid nothing. I don't care if you paid mortgage for 30 years. You don't own nothing because it's already paid in gold. So the allodial title is in the person who paid for that. No such thing as a state own anything. So that's why. If you can commingle your two different thoughts, you will bring confusion. Unless you folks get to see the basics of just knowing about kingdom law, knowing all the pala pala that is attached to back it up, you will know there's no way. So if they can recognize the 1 1, which they wrote, and their um, source of authority is kingdom law, and it is a legislative act that they're referencing to, then all legislative act of the kingdom they got to accept because you take one part of our law you take it all whether you like it or not and it still secures our title to the land but we're not native Hawaiians unless they add subject at the end then we identify ourselves in our political identity for me I don't like to even say native Hawaiian because they want you to be confused we would rather just say we would makainana when I go in court oh my gosh the judge what, what, what do you mean Makaina? And I say, you know what that is? <laughs> and I say, we are the owners of this land, undividedly with all the Kanaka. Even babies, yet just being born, they have an undivided interest because they carry their blood in them. And nobody is left out of that. That is a birthright, exactly. And so, you know, um, and, and that's why, you know, that's why you got to find where is the resource of your, your statements that you're making. Can you back up what you're saying? Because if you're going to say the state owns the raw patent, I will it. And here's the best proof I'm going to give you. Now watch this, okay? So, we know that all the Hawaiian trust came from where? The ha where? From the where? The Hawaiian kingdom. You get Kamehameha trust, you speak Bishop, Bishop Estate trust. You have Damon trust, you have Campbell trust, you have Lili Kalani, Luna Lilo, and all of them you know what their assets were because they stole that, but actually they didn't, the land is here. All of their assets in their trust, this Hawaiian trust, is all land under Royal Patents and Land Commission Award. So you, you're telling me that they're all okay with keeping their 
Hawaiian titles, but all of us who goes into court as, as Maka'i Nana cannot aole. That's the biggest proof we get to show that you cannot keep this because you are not the original trustees. Because in the kingdom, you have to be one Hawaiian subject, swear an oath in order for you to be a trustee over all those different trusts. They're, home, they're U.S. citizens. So they're thieves right now. They cannot do what they're doing and hold what they're doing. But in the name of the trust is how they're protecting themselves. But all of their land assets is all around Patent Land Commission Award. So you see, you do for that, the corporation, but you don't do for who actually has that right of ownership and claim of the land. And that's how you can prove that the raw patent is still in it because those trusts, not the state, not the city, not the federal, in the trust is where they're holding their title under the Royal Patent Land Commission Award. Yes, Jack. Everything you've said leads me to understand that this fraud, which it it, 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 it to, in my comprehension, this fraud has been going on for decades upon decades. Absolutely. So, based on that, fraud can be prosecuted. And guess what? There's no statute of limitation because it vitiates so, all contracts. It so, what, what is the status of prosecuting the fraud of the Hawaiian Islands, you know, the sovereign state of Hawaii? Can the government be sued for fraud? Okay, so, so, so correction, that there's no sovereign state of Hawaii. There is a bankrupt state of Hawaii by need. And just correct. to make a, you know, a simple correction, but you see the meeting that I'm doing? I, I, everything is about kingdom law for me. And so when I teach, you're not going to get anything outside unless it's going to relate and they're going to identify the kingdom law. Like how the courts we went to, they recognize the kingdom law. Many of our people who are sitting in this meeting now, been to many, many different meetings, hear many things, and they all sound really good. But if we don't see what's backing that up, where did that come from? Is that the ultimate source? Is that the very conception of what you are talking about? Because sometimes when they speak, Oh, but this is what I heard. We don't want to know what you heard. We want to know what you got because it's coming out from here. So for me, if I cannot back up the things that I say, I'm not going to even say it because I cannot answer you. If you're going to ask me something, I need to tell you the truth and that's how I do it. I back it up by that. So it's like, okay, you know what? Only takes one person to move a nation like Gandhi, like Moses. It can just take a small little group to move this to get bigger numbers. Are people not really knowing what they really have or still have? Or what's going to happen tomorrow? If they're going to be evicted and they're going to be out with the rest of the homeless, that even them not supposed to be out and made homeless. They should be in their homes. The bottom line is all of this can be rectified. It takes our people to move the, the nation, not just the leader, the whole nation. But if we begin with small, it will multiply and it will magnify and the world will hear. Because it said they finally know who they are. They finally are one people. You see. So we're not doing it for them. We have to do it for us first. That's why nobody really recognizing us. No matter how much work they do, if you don't know who you are in this your own country, you're lo it's a losing battle. But if we can come together with a small group at a time, like when he goes up, he doesn't take 100, 200. Most of the time, it's him by himself, Yelia. It's just him, and he stands to stand. He'll always be a pro, uh, you know, a pro independent person. He'll never change, and that's what I know of him. But I can just tell you that having different meetings, you have to be able to make choices, but have understanding, so you can be able to make the right decision. Not because somebody said and now it sounds good and fine. Okay, so we this now. Oh, no, no, we this now. Oh, okay. Who are we really? So unless you see what the king said, what our legislative body said, and that the state of Hawaii recognizes kingdom law, who are we all going to believe now? Are we going to believe the kingdom law? Because they all point to the kingdom law. So we go in the kingdom law and we see what is it that is in there that can tie us to the land. Because we have more authority than the governor and then the mayors and all of that. I wanted to say one thing, um, and I, I, I want to throw it out there so that you guys can understand where I come from because I, I can't just do this and finish this without telling you. So you have 
people in different um, organizations or institutions, like you got the uh, like you got the legislative body and you got the city council. And I believe that in what Jen Ruggles, she's an awesome person, the people love her up in the Big Island. But the thing is that she needs to look inside in her position in that seat she holds because that's the seat that continues to plunder and pillage that real, real property tax that people are still paying all over the island, especially for Hawaii. So instead of looking out and suit the state, look into your own first. Take care, clean your house first. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that is for every single city and county, county council person. And I just believe that she's looking somewhere else and I believe she's being led to look somewhere else when she has to look in her own back door because even while she is, um, she's not sitting on there, because her oath connects her to that office and that position, whatever decides, she's part of the decision. Because she's still yet, and if she's getting paid every two weeks, she is, and it's been a couple months that she's been off there. So you're still attached to it. But everything she does, she has a big heart. She may not be Kanaka, but she got a big heart, and she means well. But for me, I would rather her begin to do something like, I need to look at the city and county planning and the permitting, because they're telling us how to build our houses. And then we got to wait, oh, we don't like you, so we're not giving you the permits. You see what I'm saying? So you cannot do many things. And oh, by the way, we pay, you saw the taxes now. My girlfriend owns this house. She paid 1300 for the year. They just gave her her new bill, 5800 from next year on. They're doing that because of the rail. It's a dumb rail, okay? Now, the rail is another thing because the city council for Honolulu approved of it. But guess what? You know where that rail started? Where did it start? Anybody know? In Kapolei? You know what is the real name of Kapolei over there? It's called Hono Uli Uli. Okay. Hono Uli Uli is 43,250 acres. One royal patent, Miru Kikaonohi. Miru was married three times. Kamehameha II. She married to um, Aarona Keli Ahonui, which is the, the king, the last king of Kauai's son, King Kamoli. That's my Ohana on my mom's side. And I know that particular line. And she also has a land commission award. Guess what happened? In 1931, the court's going to be big body because they're going to go ahead and they're going to use this land court thing that they do in the mainland. And they went ahead and they covered the whole 43,250 acres, put it on the land court. Under the Hawaiian homes, they're not supposed to go on private land, only supposed to be crown lands. They're supposed to give leases. They stepped on there purposely not to go take care of Hawaiians because look at them. Look how many houses they were supposed to build, but they get Kamakana Ali. Who cares? They get tons and tons of shopping center all over Kapolei, as you folks know. Why are you going to make one in there? You could be building houses, right? But they did that because now a federal can, they can move in to get federal grants and funding to do, to match up with the state to put the rail. The rail is on private land, on the one route path in one land commission. How I know? Because they get a rail here. <laughs> so here is the land commission award, 11216, that tells you it's private. Here's the Royal Patent 6971. Now, the reason why this is very interesting, and maybe some of you guys will want to know this case, and is the case is called Petey, uh, no, 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 not Pei Ahi versus Petey. That particular case was a 1980 something case, 82, and it finished in 888, if I'm not mistaken. But what happened is that the state, when defined, that there are public lands and private lands. So this person, they used to call him Hawaiian, his name is Nape Ahi from Big Island, and he noticed that they were dredging where the Waikoloa Hotel is, and about maybe almost two acres, 1.75 acres, but they didn't have a permit. So he went to get the Native Hawaiian Legal Corp, and they went ahead to sue on his behalf, and he sued the chairman, William Petey, who was the chairman and the director of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, and he took them to court. He ended up losing, and you know why he lost? is because the chairman himself and his defense attorney, the deputy attorney general himself, came forward and he said, that's not, that's not um, public land, that's not ceded land, that's private land. And guess what? They went show because there is a royal patent, there is a land commission award, and one more thing, they said there's a boundary certificate. Whenever I help people, I need to make sure there's that 
here is the boundary certificate for Honolulu Uli. So in Waikoloa, they brought these two and this, and this is the DLNR. I want you guys to know they're supposed to manage all the ceded lands. But they came forward and told Napi Ahi, you wrong. This is not private land. The private land, which is a Royal Pantheon Land Commission Award and this boundary certificate created in the 1860s. He said, no, that's private land. What we do is public land. The state only has jurisdiction over state land. Anything they create is supposed to be theirs. <coughs> and that case, that's why I like that case, because it shows the separation between public land and private land. And the private land is where the LCA and the RP sit. So that case is important. So write that case, okay? Nape Ahi versus Pedi. I think it's 1982 to 1988 case. But, you know, and so that's why I wanted to show you the Honolulu, Uli, we get them all. So we went in to argue with that particular judge before, and he acts really dumb. His name is Gary Wan Bin Chang. Just so happened to be the same judge that Ruthie yeah. went go after. We was already dealing with him. And, you know, so we went in and, um, you know, just watching him. You can tell he wants to be honest. But, you know, he got all these high-powered attorneys over here, you know, and they go get the barato at the end when they win the case, you know. And that's just how it works because everything is very commercial. But, you know, like I said, this is theirs. This is um, these two. This is the Land Commission Award. And this is the Royal Patent for Makaha right here. It's private land. The whole 4,000-something acres. But for Wai'anae and this area, they don't have any on there. Okay, one last thing and then I'm going to close is that this is called the Land Patent Grand Sales Book. You only go get this book and this book to talk about land. So what is this? This is the only book where you could find all, anybody who was not Kanaka, that they were going to buy from the government, but they weren't buying land. They were buying real estate. Oh, get you guys thinking, right? Real estate and real property is not land. It's not, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a colorful title. Like these, these are not titled to land. They're color of titles, okay? But if you're not gonna find them in here, they're gonna make other claims. Like, you know Moana Little Park, the big park? It's supposed to be owned by Damon Estate. He bought 700 something acres. He got them in here. He couldn't get them here because he don't have the cocoa. But guess what? And so that you folks know, that when you got land here, you had to pay every year for taxes too to the wine kingdom. And when you did it, they confiscate your land, they auction it because they own the land. That's why you keep paying taxes. So imagine, every land that's out there in the islands, you pay in real property tax. When the city council went past, when Rowena helped them, you know why she went in to do that? Because they exempted the people who could connect themselves to their genealogy, to the original recipient, to be exempt from taxation. Because they're going under kingdom law. You guys see this, they recognize kingdom law and Oha, to have Oha recognized people, that is the most awesome thing we could have. Because why? <clears throat> because it'll bring them down to where they need to be. Because they're acting as if they're the kingdom government and they're not. Right. Okay? Because they were a corporation. Right. Okay, it takes people of the blood to create. And I'm sorry if you guys not, but I just gotta tell it like it is. Okay? I don't mean to offend anybody, but these are the two books that's out there. That's the only place you can find every land in the whole kingdom. If you don't find them in here, it's because it's still under the Hawaiian kingdom government itself. Okay? So you can find everybody over here. In fact, there's a 60-something thousand acre was to Elizabeth Sinclair. Guess what that was for? Niihau. Yeah. Niihau. No, no, I'm sorry. Not Niihau. Lanai. It was Lanai. Niihau got the Robinson. Robinson. Yeah, the Robinson. But you see, because of the fact that they all pay Taxes are yeah. uh, Those lands are contingent and I mean um, um, contiguous <coughs> to our islands and they make up one country. If you commit treason by being another, having another citizenship, you, lo you lose everything. And normally, no, not normally, I'm going to tell you, it is what it is. You commit treason, it's death, they confiscate all your real estate and all your personal property. It is a law, it's never been changed, it never will. It is what it is. So all these people who bought thousands of acres, they are U.S. citizens. They own nothing. Everything is seized back to the kingdom so that the kingdom can give everybody back, our people back the lands. That's why, that's why we're here. The kingdom government don't own the lands. They don't own the money. That monies and the lands are used to give it back to our people. And that's what the kingdom's supposed to do. So anyway.
Okay, I think that's funny. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 one close. Um, I was telling you about why they're not, um, why they're not occupied and why they're not government. It's not only because they're coming in as a trust, it's because they're trading companies. And if any of you guys invest in stocks and bonds and everything else, they're called trading companies. When we went into court on several occasions, like when we got arrested in 2012, I brought this in and I told the judge that um, you are a trading company, the court is a trading company, and I got your Dun & Bradstreet number, do you want it? He gets his gavel, boom, he said Chambers, he walked up. <laughs> I busted him because of the fact that every court is operating as a trading company and those judges are not judges because they're under the federal, they're not judges. So they're, they're operating administratively under a trading company and all this is purchased. Almost $200 for one company, only like five pieces of paper, but we didn't care. So we got the receipt, everything online, so I'm going to tell you who I got. I got the Department of Land and Natural Resources, they went trading company. On top of that, I got the Board of Land and Natural Resources, not just the department. We got the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, they're trading companies, people, they're not nothing government. Um, department of Hawaiian Lands, like that, huh? We got also the Hawaiian Commission. They're separate from the education. Okay, how's this, guys? We got the public safety, which is where all the sheriffs and the prison guards, we got theirs. They were training company. We didn't put Waianae or any other place, but we got the Honolulu City and County Police Department. Because every police department, every sheriff, but you know what I think about is that they don't even know. They think they're working for a government. They don't know they're an employee of a trading company who takes, like for instance, in a court. And you know, Ray can tell you she is like AA plus in this area. <laughs> but the thing about it is that they take your case and they're going to securitize it like how they do it with mortgages and they're going to sell it and make money off of your name. And that's what they do. And how do I know this proof? Because I got some of that and she got loads of that. And on her name alone in the cases, she pulled millions of dollars that they made money off of her name through her case. They take your case, you got one uh, case number, right? And they're gonna take your name in uppercase, they're gonna take that and they're gonna go securitize and they're gonna make millions and millions of dollars over and over again. You can get a car loan 10 years ago and they, it's worth millions and millions of dollars. It's the things that they do because they're operating commercially. So when I began to understand <coughs> this, I didn't look at them as a government and fear. I said, you like any other McDonald's. Well, I'm a Makaina and I'm greater than McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken because that's how you gotta make it. If you make them look like they got something big, people can gravitate to it. But if you make them look like they got tanks and they, you know, this and they can do this to you, then fear sets in and I don't like doing this, I'm gonna just say status quo. Right? And that's what happens and that's what we do. We do. We end up just cow-towing and back up. We cannot do that no more. And I'm going to hold all you guys accountable because every one of you guys is sitting in here and everybody is witnessing for each other that this is the truth. And if you guys want to see and whatever, by all means, if you need more, do your due diligence. Go into different places. And like I said, I go to the Supreme Court, I go to the Secret Court. They're all public paperwork that you can purchase. I go to the, you know, the libraries. You know, Hamilton is awesome, you can go to over there, you can go many, many other places. Um, but anyway, um, this is what I have to share. And thank you so much. Thank you to you. And thank you, Kellen. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I don't think I can answer any questions, maybe three. Because my husband got to go work. I'm going to go take you to work. But I'll ask, I'll, I'll answer three questions, okay? Yeah, Ray. Uh, when we're in court and... Um Oh, wait, I have something for you before we go. I'm going to give you something, okay? If uh, we give the court subject matter jurisdiction and state, okay, you have to be following Hawaiian Kingdom law and enforce Kingdom law, with the Hawaii Revised Statute, how do we know if they're complementing Kingdom law or going against Kingdom law? Good question. So, what you need is to back up where the source of their law comes from. If they tell you HRS is this and that and so forth, or if they tell you this is this and that, okay, fine. 
But when you go re when you go read it, you gonna see how they're gonna use the source of authority. Then you pull the source of authority, like the chapter fifty seven. But you need to certify it because when you submit anything into court, what I always say is I am in vote FRE nine oh two, which means Federal Rules of Evidence nine oh two where they have to accept anything that's certified as if it's original, because that's what the law said. All of the court said, this is state, this is not federal. And I said, so you're telling me that you're not gonna accept this. Every state court is on the Title 28 USC. And I said, and I'm gonna give you that. Oh, they stop automatically. Because I'm gonna take them with it, they, they gonna act up with me, I'm gonna take them what a law is on their side. And that, I'm sorry, but that's what I do. So in, um, so in your particular case, that's what I would do. I would take whatever documents in the kingdom and I would pretty much hand it over to, to them and tell them that this is who, you know, pretty much they are. I was going to say something. It just went slip my mind because I had something for you. You have to make uh, copies for the lawyers too. Um, well, I was going to say something to do with that. Say that again? You also have to make copies for the lawyers. When you're in their court, okay, when you're in their court you, and you answer, Okay, so you got to give them copy and this and that. You know, it's at a point with us, we don't even know go to court. We just, you know, we don't even have to file papers. And if we do, when we do, it's all kingdom paperwork. But we're using their laws that they're using in their document against us. And we're giving them the source of authority of where you got that from. You see, because how come you're using kingdom law if you're not a Hawaiian subject? Only Hawaiian subject can use the kingdom law or the Maka'i Nana, because the law is what created the rights of them to make the claim on the particular land. But I had something I had on my mind that I wanted to share with you. But um, uh, with, with Red, it's been very stubborn in the courts, and that's Castanetti. Um, and, yeah. is, and, and Chang. So she gets the two people that Ruthie was going after that she has already been in court for. <laughs> the most corrupt judges. Oh my gosh. Because, you know, because they feel tough. But you know what? I'll tell you something. She knows how to fight that battle in there. Yeah. It's trying to get them to, um, to actually um, be honest. Yeah. And, you know, and to be honest takes a lot when you got everybody around you that, you know, you're going to hang the bank and you're going to hang the lawyers because everybody is making barato. Yeah. They're making their own shares from yeah. the, the, you know, the, um, ju the ju judgment of the particular judge, you know. Yeah, everybody's getting a cut. So, you know, I guess for me and my husband, when we go to court, because we go in there before, we take other people, and when they said, oh, who, who is she? Oh, no, no, she don't have a case. Who is she here for? <laughs> then we got to, then I tell them who we're in for, and then he looks at that, and he goes, okay, 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 okay. Um, I'm going to pass this case. Take them off. Boom, go. And all our guys end up, if they have to pay bail, they get the bail back like that. But they shouldn't have paid it, but I don't know what happens to everybody they on the road if it does happen. So it's been about maybe, I think, a good five years since anybody had anything like that. For me, I don't been. I've never been arrested for any of that, except when they did that to me on the palace. And oh, I forgot to say that they did arrest us, but they didn't have the warrant and the court order. But we sued them in court for $25 million. Okay? Now, I didn't even pursue it because the kingdom is more important to me than trying to get the 25 million each of us was sued in for. That's how much the kingdom means to us. Right. But we, we, all that paperwork has been done and it's in our paper. Yeah. You think that you're on false arrest, uh, kidnap, extortion, trying to get money for bill. Uh-uh. So that's how we sued him for $25 million and he was found. So that's why they're trying to get rid of the case, but they cannot because we get the stamp from the clerk. Each one of us got the original paperwork that was stamped. So I'm sorry, we still got it. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Yes? Okay. What's your name? Okay, hi, my lady. Hi. I didn't have to before. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, Filippo. Ah. Yeah, we remember his Okay. Um, anyway, um, okay, what if you got a state of Hawaii ticket? What kind of ticket are you talking about? Traffic okay, ticket. Traffic ticket. And um, the address that's on the ticket of where you got the ticket from, you know, where the cop says you got the ticket, um, has no TMK. Oh, okay. Have a okay. Word of oh, I see. Okay. Commission award. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was gonna look for that, but it's at it's at wait, Honolulu wait, wait, International. Wait, wait. What area did you get your ticket in? Honolulu International Airport. Okay, so that's in Honolulu area. I think that's Crown Max, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the tax map key, they're not supposed to be tax map key on Crown lands, but they do have tax map keys. Yeah. They, they do. But they're not supposed to because that's still private land, right guys? Yeah, right. It's all private land. Okay, so let me just share this with you. And in fact, it was my brother couple um, a few months ago because we shared him his paperwork and his template and everything. So just so happened he had my friend Walter Rodby <laughs> and ended up, uh, my, um, they argued that, and he was winning his cases, then they took it to the Intermediate Court of Appeals and guess what? The Intermediate Court of Appeals had affirmed and recognized the Hawaiian Kingdom in what he stood up for. And so he got that, so no matter what traffic ticket, I don't give his license, no more license, no more you know, registration, whatever it is, that case is a precedent case. <coughs> I don't know what the case number is. This is a couple months ago. Um, yeah, you can ask Walter about that. Uh, my brother, Dane Kahao, D-A-Y-N-E. And so um, he has a particular copy of the paper. But what, what I wanted to say is that um, in the past couple months, there's some people who brought this up to me and it would make a lot of sense um, that you either gonna be crossing over Crown lands or private lands, okay? Because Crown lands is, is or was, or is, um, the, the king and government lands. That's what crown lands are. Everything else gonna be private, okay? Royal Patent Land Commission Award grants. Okay, so what I'm saying is that when you go in court, there's two jurisdictions, right? Personum and like he said, subject matter. You know what subject matter is? Subject matter is the geographical location of where you got your ticket. So what are you gonna do? You gotta what? You gotta get your what? And you're gonna certify what? You're gonna find out where that ticket was given to you. You're gonna to go to the Bureau of Conveyance. You're gonna find out where that location is so that you can prove the Royal Patent and the Land Commission Award on it, okay? Because what you're trying to do is that you're going in and you're, you're saying it's gonna be um, dis dismissed for lack of venue, okay? So the venue has to do with the geographical location. So when you prove that you have the title to the land, they cannot really fight you because they need two jurisdictions to operate the case. If they miss either one, they cannot. They need two, okay? Because if you show that, automatically the persona falls on you because you're going into kingdom law, okay? You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So that could be something to look at because that's what um, a lot of people said, a lack of jurisdiction when they file in court. I say, go in there and say that you want to dismiss for lack of venue because it's a geographical location. And we know that we can go ahead and bring all our titles even if it's not under us. You know, like for instance, Honohuli Huli is Miruki Kaonui. I don't think anybody, anybody related to her? No. You are? Oh, wonderful. I need to talk to you. <laughs> but the reason why is because it doesn't matter. It proves that it's a private title under the kingdom. You remember I was reading to you guys 7-1? It says you have the right to free water, right? Running water, drinking water, and the roads are free to all. My brother used that one time when they saw that, boom, the case was gone. Just like that, instantaneously. Because we went to HRS chapter 12, 7-1. Just because we identified that particular land and we took the law from the kingdom, which was in the HRS and the case was done. I, I tell you, it does work. You need to realize that when you look at the citation, that means a source of authority in there, you're gonna be able to find out that that has to do with who you are and the law you're using. Okay, one more question. Anybody, no? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Aloha. Aloha.